The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Hello, beautiful people! And welcome to the gorgeous state of Utah on this new Friday, October 27. This sports button starts now. campus tomorrow in a massive way. This university has 80 straight sellouts for their Utah football team. They have won 29 out of the last 30 here in beautiful Utah. And tomorrow, the mighty Utah student section is going to bring all the energy and juice to an Oregon squad where the loser will be out of the college football playoff conversation yep. forever. Oh, yeah. no. The winner propels themselves into the favorite of the Pac-12, and Utah is no stranger to that. You're talking about back-to-back Pac-12 champions. <laughs> it is an honor to be here, and I'm not alone, obviously. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor with his mullet flowing fantastically. <laughs> Connor did not expect it. No, I had no idea. This, this is absurd. When we were walking up here, you can kind of hear him yelling. And I actually said to Ty, I believe, holy shit, there are actually people here in Utah. I did not expect that whatsoever. And the signs, some of these signs are unbelievable. You got a lot of soaking signs, which I do believe is a Latter-day Saints tradition uh, before you were married. Uh-huh. We got some AJ signs. We got a couple kicking Why? signs. Why? We got duck season signs. We got vitamin we got signs. Connor. We have Connor over here. We got Boston Connor sign over there. And me. Ladies and gentlemen, the other half of the, we have a shirtless man in the front row who has shaved his chest for this moment. And I'll tell you what, you look great, kid. Oh yeah, he does. You look great. <laughs> He's strapped. The other half of the toxic table is here, obviously, at Ty Schmidt. What a place here, pal. Yeah, color me shots. I mean, we understand. We come to these places and we know people are going to be here. But like Connor mentioned, I mean, there's just no way in hell you could have thought that this many people are going to be out here this early going this ape shit. This place is awesome. Yeah. It's 10 a.m. local. It's beautiful Friday, October 27th. We are just days away from Halloween. There's people dressed up on campus. And I'll tell you what, all the demos that we've read from our internet reports about our fans, they have not said Utah is one of our biggest states. No. But I'll tell you what, I love you people. (laughs) This is crazy. What the hell? One half of the hammer. Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs is here. Tone, I wasn't betting on this reaction out here. No. uh, But I assume that once you see this, you feel good in your soul. I feel great. You know what? See this thing? It's too early. It's three minutes into the show. Bro, just slow your roll. I mean, I got this thing on because it was just gifted to me literally right before. Well, what? Shock a, yeah, shock the duck. Shock the I can't make it out. Shock like corn? Lock the duck. Oh, yeah, truck the ducks. Oh, okay. no, no, yeah, no. They're saying put the ducks into a truck sure. and then ship them the hell out of Utah. Exactly. That's what they're saying. That's right. Shout out to them saying truck the ducks. I love that. That seems to be a common chant Great in these Pac-12 schools. And we were in Washington. Very similar things were being said early in the morning. And I, uh, it is my great honor to introduce to this incredible crowd a man who's a college football national champion. What? A man that's a Super Bowl champion. What? 
A man who's the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. What? A man who's a father of 10. What? A COVID survivor. What? The greatest jawline in sports. What? The current president of not this state, but the state of Ohio. What? Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hall. Yeah. Beautiful out here, huh? I'll tell you what, baby. You guys brought a lot more juice than we expected. Okay. This crowd's unbelievable. Yeah. Whoa. Thank you for the help, man. Uh, I don't know how the hell we're going to be able to do a show out here. <laughs> but I will say, hey, hey, real quick, thank you. Yeah. Okay. There's a modality sign over here. Nice. I'm sure Aaron's watching right now over there in LA as he's working his Achilles. They're thinking about you. I actually chatted with Aaron uh, about flying in here. He said, wait until you fly in yeah. there. It, Beautiful city nestled in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And as you're flying in, you're seeing the Rockies, you're seeing the water, you're seeing the snow, you're seeing a mine, oh, you're yeah. seeing yeah. the absolute beauty of the United States of America. If you've never been to Utah, I personally would recommend getting your ass to Salt Lake City. Yeah, yeah. Quick. They got a big one against Oregon, obviously, tomorrow is going to be the talk of the town. And uh, I mentioned it at the start, but it's real. 80 straight sellouts here mm -hmm. for this Utah football team. Wow. Whoa. 80 straight. The head coach, Coach Kyle Whittingham, has been the head coach here since 2005. He will be joining us in about two hours or so here on the set. Cam Rising, quarterback of Utah last year, redshirting this year because of a knee injury that he suffered in the Rose Bowl. He'll be joining us in an hour and 20 minutes. Steve Smith will be joining us in about 54 minutes or so. Dalton Kincaid, fresh off of his big night, will be joining us live via FaceTime in a couple hours. And in 15 minutes, Alex Smith will be joining us. Good so that absolutely stacked Utah lineup out here in front of these incredible fans. I look to my right, I see these beautiful rolling hills. There's the Rockies over there. There's some water over here. The weather, I thought it was going to be cold. It is perfect. Yeah. Yes. It's a great day to talk about ball. And we are very, very lucky to be here. Let's dive into it. Last night, Dalton Kincaid, mm -hmm. formerly of Utah, now with the Buffalo Bills. With Dawson Knox out, had the opportunity to become the guy for Josh Allen, and he certainly did that yep. last evening. I had a chance to chit chat with Kirk Herbstreit earlier, and he said in their meetings, whenever he was leading up to the game last night, he said everybody was expecting Dalton Kincaid to have a massive game. They knew that all he needed was an opportunity to do his thing. They're talking about him being a guy. Oh, yeah. They know that Dawson Knox is legit. And there's room for two great tight ends on every team, especially in the 2023 football season. But what Dalton and Josh Allen were able to cook up last night, that's off script, how you doing? First touchdown, where am I going? Lambo leap, I think so. Right into the beautiful Buffalo Bills people. In this game last night, I think the Buffalo Bills were obviously dominant in the first half. Now it did have a tie at one situation. The Buffalo Bills would end up being going up 14. And then at the very end, Baker Mayfield and that Tampa Bay Buccaneers team will start mounting a little bit of a comeback. Mm -hmm. There was an absurd fourth and eight face mask call that extended yep. the drive. Then a fourth and ten touchdown that hit off of a dude's head. Then a two-point conversion yep. that hit off of somebody's shoulder. All of a sudden, the Bucks are back in it with two minutes left. Couldn't get the onside. The Buffalo Bills get the win, but not the cover. AJ, you had the Bucks plus nine and a half wow. last night Obviously. on Thursday Night Football. <laughs> I thought, as I was watching it, the Bills were the right decision, especially with Dalton coming into his own. Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, this Shakir guy that I didn't even yeah. know existed. Stunned. He's an absolute weapon. Hardy, the punt returner. Mm -hmm. Sam Martin had a big game. I thought the Bills were going to run away with that thing, double-digit victory, but Baker Mayfield, Tampa Bay, make it close in the end. What did you learn last night? Ian? Yeah, well, if you, if you saw some of the comments that Baker Mayfield made after the game, he'd said, like, oh, we, we hung in there, we fought hard. That's, like, the, the main positives we can take from this. There's no moral victories in the NFL or in college football. We know that. But – 
I don't know. I mean, the, the Bills are the Bills. They should run through a lot of teams. So I think we were expecting them to win by a little bit more. I was not. Obviously, that's why I took the Bucks at, uh, what, plus nine and a half? Is All that right. right. Will you read some of these stats real quick right there? Baker. Baker Mayfield, 25-42, 237 yards, two touchdowns, 19 rush yards. <laughs> yeah. He Take can. Your sign down, sir. Yeah. And he can read. read. <laughs> hey, if I couldn't read that, I wouldn't be able to read that sign, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, dumb, dumb. Yeah. You got Good him. on you, pal. You got him. Cardboard sign. A couple of those. A lot of soaking going on. Yeah. A lot of soaking. I don't know what that means, guys. Someone's have to let me know. Yeah, you do. Hey, so just real quick, real quick. Uh-oh. By noise, okay, <laughs> who all out here has done the soaking before? Yeah! yeah. This, guy, cool. this guy, yeah. Oh, yeah. Blue blue sweatshirt. He knows. Sick son of a bitch <laughs> right there in a SeaWorld sweatshirt. My mom, my, watches my, this. Watches. <laughs> my mom watches this. Hey, James, for those that don't know, I believe soaking is a way to get around some rules that are potentially put in place for some religions. Yeah, most perhaps. specifically, some religions here in Utah, yep. where premarital uh, sexual intercourse is not allowed. That's right. Exactly. But if I just so happen to end up inside, <laughs> what am I going to do? Someone's kicking me. Oops. That's earthquake. What if you're on the top of the bunk bed, though? So that's called soaking. And then underneath, you get an earthquake in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he comes in. How <laughs> about And he rattles it out. I've, I will say, walking around the building, I think it was the science building we were in. Oh, yeah. There, yep. A lot of labs. There's some really tall. I saw like seven people that were above six foot six out here. Mm -hmm. I saw some incredibly handsome people. Oh, yeah. Oh, like very, very, very handsome people. And then I saw some Mormons back here that said, A.J. Hawk can't read. Yeah. <laughs> it truly is a beautiful thing. Tone, let's talk about it. Another backdoor cover seemingly oh, yeah. happening on these Thursday night football games. Chuck Pagano, A.J. Hawk had the Bucks plus nine and a half. I was on the Bills. I felt good. I fell asleep. I watched the end of it this morning whenever we woke up to hop on the bird out here. I was disgusted by the face mask on fourth and eight, mm -hmm. the dome shot touchdown, then off the shoulder it does that. But that's Gomblin, baby. How many people were on the Bucks last night? Because on TV, NFL Live, everybody had the Buffalo Bills. Yep. On the Thursday night primetime kickoff show with uh, Clarissa Thompson, Fitz, who had a hell of a yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Fitz, had a baby. Thanks, we appreciate Fitzy. you, Fitzy. Had a hell of a night. Sherm, Witt, yep. Gonzalez, right. everybody. Clean sweep. Clean sweep. They had the Bills as well. And I think that's because Fitz was there and the magic that they were feeling. I thought me with the Bills minus nine and a half was going to be weird. Everybody seemed to be on it. It was at that moment we knew that I was probably going to lose. But what did the public do last The uh, trend continues, Pat. Uh, over 70% was on the Bills last night. And we the top eight betters or the top eight games last week of favorites, they all lost last week. So it continues this week. And boy, oh boy, was it a tough one. It started on what the eight yard line of their own that drive with like eight minutes left, nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. They didn't pick up one, they didn't pick up one fourth down, they picked up multiple fourth downs. They were dinking and dunking the entire way down the field. There was penalties, there was missed uh turnover opportunities for the Bills on that drive, and then the, the dink off of uh off the helmet for Mike Evans and then the two point conversion and then the, the, the fail Mary, the Hail Mary that almost was. Whoa. Yeah, the Hail was Mary is something one. that was interesting. Shout out to Baker Mayfield getting it there, by the way. Nice 67 yard ball from Baker to end this thing. But if this ball was caught by Godwin, I think we have it. I believe we have it. We don't have it. We're pulling it up. We don't have it. Anyways, there was a Hail Mary, Baker Mayfield from his own like 38 Hawks one. 62 yards to get to the end zone. Obviously, he's in the NFL. You're going to have to do that. Mm -hmm. That thing travels another five yards. Hits the ground. Yes. Nobody touches it. No. no Buffalo Beal. No Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Nope. But if that somehow ends up in Godwin's hand, all of a sudden, Tampa Bay is sneaking out of Buffalo with a big-time win on Thursday night football. This ball was hawked by Baker. Yes. Oh. Right to the ground. Nobody has. Whoa. Nobody. Just, I've never seen something like that in the NFL happen. But I woke up and I watched the last quarter of this game. Damn. The Bucks, who did not look great for a lot of no, the game, no. almost walk out of there with the win. That's kind of the story of the NFL this year, Connor. Yeah, it's wild, especially the story with the Bills. Like, if you look at the whole game, it felt like they were dominating, and they did dominate most of it. They tried to get Kincaid involved early. He almost scored on their first drive yeah. on a nice little shovel pass. So they were definitely making it a point to involve them. But, yeah, this might be the Bills thing, where they look great for 50 minutes, and then 10 minutes of that game, Tampa has a couple breaks. And, I mean, anytime your punter is throwing fists, in a little huddle yeah. after a field goal, you know that the team has a little moxie about it. Not just throwing fists. This dude was swinging helmets. And these Utah football fans are smart football fans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Smart it. football fans. Smart football fans. Okay, they understand the importance of uh, field position and punting. Last night, Sam Martin and Jay Camarda were almost the MVPs of the game. Now, Sam Martin had two beautiful pins inside the five with some coffin cornerness oh, yeah. where he was dropping that son bitch sideways, hitting that thing from his own 40, and turning it left on a dime. Get out of bounds, he says. The ref says, oh, damn, haven't seen that <laughs> since the 80s with Ray Guy. That ball's out at the three. He would go on to do that again. And on the flip side, Jay Camarda, he had a 53-yard ball that pops out of bounds inside the five, mm. had a 60-some yarder, another 50-some mm -hmm. yarder, almost got into a fight after a 57-yard field goal where he was swinging his helmet. Jake Camarda Ooh. was all over the field last night. Now, there was a play that was being discussed, and it was a field goal. It was a 60-yarder with 19 seconds left in the second half. And in that play, they McLaughlin, Chase McLaughlin goes and does his entire steps. So if this was supposed to be a fake, he was really selling it as if it was supposed to be a kick. Jake Camarda, the holder, actually goes like this to the snapper and to Chase. He goes, no, no, no. And this sign right here to the snapper is, hey, we're not snapping it. Now, Dan Orlovsky, who I don't think he's ever held for anything in his entire life, <laughs> he went on the internet and he said that he was potentially calling off a fake. Now, with 19 seconds left yeah. in the second quarter, I don't know if you're running a fake. Maybe, though. Maybe that's what Bowles wanted to do. There is a chance that it was so windy. The wind was picking it up, was. Oh. and it was a 60-yard field goal, and Camarda's like, nah, why are we going to give them the ball at the 50 here with 15 seconds left? Could be that. Could have been a fake. Could have been a direct snap to Chase to do the punt. There's a lot of things that could have happened in there that Jake called off, but he's one of their stars down there. Jake oh, yeah. Camarda is one of the stars of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. He wasn't able to get a win last night, but he did everything he possibly could, Todd. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you would know more than most people whether or not it was a fake, but like you mentioned, like they, where the game was at at that point, I think Tampa would have been more than okay going into half with the score, what it was. I don't know why you'd risk running a fake there. We all know Josh. Maybe, though. We Maybe, don't know. We but, don't know. but knowing that the Bills are going to get the kick to start the second half and then they ended up marching right down and scoring, like why would you – Put yourself in a position to even give Josh Allen an opportunity to, A, either complete a short little pass and have Tyler Bass go out there and tack three, three more on, or chuck up a Hail Mary and have one of these guys go up and get one, and then you're looking at yourself like, oh, shit, what, you know, what, what did we get ourselves into? Up here at Latitude, you can certainly get a little breezy. You felt that mm -hmm. with the plane coming in. Yep. There has been times where I was holding for Vinny, and we were waiting until the wind dies down to snap the ball. Where we get out there, Vinny gets set with like 22 seconds left in the play clock, and we're just waiting. Everybody knows we're waiting, we're waiting for a break in the wind, snap, and we're gonna do it. There was never a time where it stopped. So I don't know if it was that, I don't know what it was, but I do know that Camarda's an absolute dog! Just like all these beautiful people. Speaking of an absolute dog, we got Kyle Whittingham, the head coach of Utah, joining us in about four minutes. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Here we go. So, no, no, I'm sorry. Not him. Now, two hours. Okay. Good tease. Yeah. Good tease. Alex Smith will be in about four yeah. minutes or so. But as we were doing uh, the preparation to talk to Coach Whittingham, I've been getting messages from people that were like, hey, here's what you should talk to Coach Whittingham about the head coach of the Utah Utes, a man who's been here since 1994. Five. Head coach since 2005. Yes. Back to back Pac 12 champion. Wow. They said, hey, when you talk to him, ask him about Harley Davidson's rock music in the United States of America. <laughs> oh, wow. hell yeah. Wow. Okay. I think his, Love that. I think his culture oh, is yeah. one that's very tough, old school, and Oregon fancies themselves the same exact way tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon, I'm sorry. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tone, we got a really good one. This is going to be the most complete teams in the Pac-12 battling tomorrow. And we got a storyline for the rest of the year popping off right out of here at Salt Lake tomorrow, 1.30 local. Yeah, it'll be interesting because uh, Washington and Oregon have been the two best offenses, offenses in the Pac-12 this season. But Utah has been the best defense by far in the Pac-12. They have. They have. So I'm excited to see what they do with that, with, against that Oregon offense. I, I think that's the story of the game for me tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, joining us now is a man who might have a little bit more information about what it's like playing right here in this gorgeous city, in this gorgeous state. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now. He played 16 years in the NFL. 
He's a three-time Pro Bowler. Was once the comeback player of the year. Actually currently has his hamstring as his shin. Okay. Right. One of the toughest humans of all time. Utah Ute, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Smith. Yeah. Pat, what's up, man? Alex. Hey. Alex. All right, Alex. Hey, you want to say anything to these beautiful people before we get started, Alex? Is the must there behind you? Is that the must? Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> the mighty Utah student section has certainly made themselves heard today and the last 80 home games. Can you please describe what it is like to be a Utah Ute? Because I'm going to be honest, okay? I'm a dipshit. <laughs> I am. I live my own world. Okay? I don't know what's going on outside of my world. I'm a doofus. I'm ignorant. Call me whatever you want. I got my blinders on, trying to live and enjoy myself. I had no clue the football community was like this out here in Salt Lake. Okay? It's been like this for a long time. I've been learning throughout the entire day. What was it like to play for this school, and why did you end up picking the Utah Utes as your school? Man, I'm, I'm so glad College Game Day and you guys are out there this weekend because this has been brewing for a long time, Pat. Uh, I'll never forget the, the first time College Game Day came out was my, uh, my last season, and they kind of got a taste of, of what is going on in Salt Lake at the U with the Mus. Uh, you know, we ran the table that year with the BCS. It started this sellout streak that is still rolling today. Um, lit, you know, unbelievable culture, unbelievable program, and the country's going to find out. Like, honestly, this is one of the best game day experiences in the Western U.S. Like, uh, unbelievable home field advantage. Like, what Wit has been doing there with the program. Uh, we're, they're building a bully, Pat. They're building a bully, man, and I think they're going to show everybody. Yeah, it's old school football, too. They've won 29 out of the last 30 home games. Okay, 29 out of the last 30, 18 out of the last 19. It is phenomenal what they got cooking, and we're lucky to be here, Alex. Um, let's dive into this, Alex, a little bit about what happened last night. You know, Dalton Kincaid had his, hello, I'm Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. I'm an NFL guy moment last night. Obviously, it ties into Utah greatly. Buffalo gets the win, but at the end, they could have lost if that Hail Mary is received by Chris Godwin, which is very easy. What did you see from the Buffalo Bills last night that maybe makes you more of a believer of them being in it at the end or less of a believer, Alex? I mean, I'm, I'm buying Buffalo Bills stock. Any, anybody that says they're not a contender just doesn't know football, in my opinion. Um, they're the real deal. Like, there's not many teams that boast a top five offense and a top five defense. They have a quarterback like Josh Allen that can go toe to toe with anybody. And I know that it looks like they may have to go on the road in the playoffs, but I, I don't think this is a team that cares. Uh, we saw them a couple years ago into Arrowhead and should have won that ball game. Like, I, I'm taking this team come the end of the season. I know they've had some injuries. I know, you know, when you lose an all pro like Matt Milano, when you lose Tredavious White, like, that, that hurts. I think come January, though, this team goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. Yeah, did you – now, obviously, last night was a late one, and the beginning of that second half was a little bit boring. <laughs> did you expect to wait – did you watch it all the way to the end? And when you woke up, did you expect to see how close Tampa made that thing? Feels like a full resurgence for Baker down there as a Buccaneer, Alex. Yeah, I mean, luckily I'm on the West Coast, Pat, so it was pretty early for me, game time. <laughs> uh, but uh, – I wasn't surprised. Listen, Tampa Bay, they're, they're a tough football team. Like, they're a good defense. They're a top 10 defense. Baker's scrappy. Like, they got two great wideouts on the outside. Like, they, the fact that they made it close, I, I don't think says anything. I think it says more about the Bucks than it does say about the Bills. Like, they're a good football team. They're going to be in every ball game this year with that defense. Um, obviously had a chance there with the goofy Hail Mary at the end. But, uh, again, I go back. Like, I, the, Bills, the Bills are the real deal. Like, when you look at the numbers, when you look at point differential in the NFL, I mean, they're the number two team in the NFL in point differential, only behind San Francisco. Like, I know they've had some rough losses, but I, I think come the end of the year, you know, again, we saw Don Kincaid start to emerge a little bit as a pass catcher. They got Gabe Davis involved yesterday. Like, I, they, they have the talent to make a run. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things. Well, Buffalo 
explode into what we thought they were? And are they able to keep up with the amount of injuries that they had? We will all watch on. You know, Porter almost had a pick last yep, night. Yep. That touchdown Gabe Davis snagged out of the sky was electrifying. Shakir, this dude Shakir, I mean, he was all over the place in the first quarter, and they always have digs. Let's go, Bills. Let's go, Bills. No doubt. Let's do this thing. AJ has a question for you, Alex. Alex, you, you mentioned that goofy Hail Mary play. Can you explain to us what it takes offensively to execute a Hail Mary like that? I know what I think you have to do defensively to try to stop that, but offensively, what are you looking at there if you're the quarterback? What do you want your receivers? How do you want, you want to box people out? Like, how do you do it? Yeah. AJ, what's up, man? Uh, well, you, you know, you, you played with one of the best when it, when it came to Hail Marys. Uh, it's a goofy play because you don't practice it ever full speed. Right, it, it's a it's a school ground backyard play, and the only time you rep it as an NFL player is on a walkthrough on Saturday, and and you know it, it's it's basically a laugh session. You know, I think ideally you've got a big body guy that's going to go up and try and fight for the ball, and then as we know, it, it's always the guy behind or in front that, that's trying to get the tip rebound that ends up making the catch uh, most often than not, like. And it's always chaotic, like last night, like four four Bills guys are on the ground. I mean, if Chris Godwin just turns around, the ball almost hits him in the chest. And then obviously as a quarterback, you're just trying to buy time, right? About, buy hey. time, buy time, move around. You know, every team plays it differently. Some teams pressure you in that situation. Some teams rush two guys. Like it, You kind of got to get a feel for it. You can't anticipate and predict what, what you're going to get. But again, you got to have a little luck too. You got to have some guys go up and fight and again, get a weird bounce. How about Baker, huh? 67 yard hose right there in Buffalo. A little chilly. I like to see that out. You have any Hail Marys in your, uh, in your playing career? None. Nah, None. Not, yeah. None. Yeah. I didn't mean to bring up wor- a sore subject. There. That's on me, bro. That's on me. I should have been good. Host. No, the, wor- the worst are the end of half ones, you know, and you're like, you're not, you're not wanting to throw a pick. So you try to throw that out of bounds. You throw it out of bounds. Guys sail it, accidentally <laughs> sail it out of bounds, you know? <laughs> That's like the basketball guys. Whenever the clock's running out, and they're like, oh, yep. oh, oh, buzzer. Damn. 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 That ruined my percentage. Yeah. Diggs has a question for you, Alex. Yeah, Alex, I'm a Steelers fan, and you had some uh, shared comments on the offense there um, this week uh, on Matt Cannon and the offense there. Is it a, can it be a simple fix? What would you do to fix that offense? Because it, it's not great right now. Yeah, no, it's it's not great to say the least, man. It is, it is, it's like the anti-Miami Dolphins. You know, it's like hold up, the- Alex. <laughs> hold up, this is in Utah. This guy's life. Yeah. It stinks. Can't get Matt, away from it. Matt Canada's Poor, life sucks. That's gonna fail. Yeah. Poor Matt Canada. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I do think it's fixable. And it's fixable because of the defense. I mean, the defense is an absolute monster. Like, when you have T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith on the edges, I think they may be the best, like, tandem edge rushers in the NFL. You've got a huge home field advantage. Again, you're going to be in every single ball game, And they do have the playmakers on offense. Like, uh, listen, getting Deontay Johnson back, like, this guy can separate mm-hmm. like nobody else in the NFL. Uh, obviously, Pickens on the other side. Like, you can play simple football. Listen, those guys are one-on-one, throw them the rock. And if they double them, you know, you should have a good box to run it. I, I would love to see a little more creativity, a little more dynamic run game out of this offense. May, uh, misdirection is allowed. We're allowed to shift in motion. Like, we can do those things. We don't have to play old school vanilla smash mouth football. Like, I, I think we saw a little bit of that out of the bye week. And again, like, I, they're four and two. I know it's ugly. I, I don't think they've beaten a single team in yards this year, even nope. in their wins. But uh, again, they're going to be in every game. Every single game, and, and if T.J. Watt keeps playing like the way he is, man. Why? Why? He's really good. I mean, now he's dropping into coverage and picking people off, disguising his coverage. I mean, it's bananas what T.J.'s doing. But let's talk about what you said about it being allowed to be creative. It does feel like football in 2023 is more fun than yeah. it's ever been. You know, like back in the day, you do a double reverse. Everybody's like, ooh, <laughs> a throwback was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Now it's almost expected. Everybody's utilizing different tricks and creativity to get an advantage on the offensive side, aside from the Pittsburgh yep. Steelers. But why is that? Why do you think it took so long to kind of evolve into this? And what do you think it does for your team? Well, I mean, I think the, mo- the shifts in motioning are hard to predict sometimes on offense, right? Like, how are these teams going to react? We certainly see an emergence of like a lot of the jet sweep, what that does. Teams starting to have a better understanding like, hey, are the safeties going to rock and roll? Is he going to run in man? Like, what, what are the responses the defense is going to do and how do we counteract that? And then a lot of this has to do with that Kyle Shanahan tree. 
we've just seen that 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 offense explode. Obviously, Mike McDaniel and in, in Miami's taking it to a new level with the track team he has. But Sean McVay, Matt Lafleur, like these guys, use it so much within their run game to create advantages and angles and gaps. Uh, and, and obviously, that's kind of taken off. And as you know, it's a copycat league. So I think everybody trying to take advantage of that. Can Miami win the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They can. They can. They, they got to get better on on defense. And I, I know they're going to get Jalen Ramsey back. They're going to get healthy. Wow. Schefter, you know, Schefter's saying Jalen's coming back. Jalen's going, well, that's news to me. That's news to me, Shefty. But, yeah, we assume he will be back. We're, we're hopeful yeah. he'll be back. I think they have one of the best defensive minds in football and Vic Fangio. So, like, I, the defense will be a work in progress. And then when you have that kind of offense, like, I, I think if they can if they can become a functional defense, like, they'll be – they're going to have a chance to make a run, no doubt. Uh, but, again, in an AFC where, like, they don't, they're not going to have the benefit of a home field advantage. They're going to have to go on the road. They're going to have to go into Arrowhead, most likely, and try to win a ball game. And, and you know, as, as you know, that's tough. Alex, if you were to be playing a game – and Taylor Swift is up there in a yeah. suite. Man. She's a billionaire. She's a billionaire. Do all you want. Officially a billionaire. Congrats, Tay. Congrats, Tay Tay. Congrats, Tay Tay. Uh, if she was to be in a box, though, doing handshakes with the other quarterback's wife that are choreographed and fantastic, what type of thing? Oh, jeez. Uh, come yeah. on. Don't no. forget, it's, uh, a, it's John Stockton State, <laughs> baby. Oh, no. Okay. I forgot about that. Don't forget. But the attention, you talk about the AFC and probably yep. going through the kingdom in Kansas City. It's like the AFC is so stacked. Do you think Travis and Patrick Mahomes are going to be able to maintain the number one seed in the AFC? Because home field advantage is there. And I know we joke about Tay-Tay being there, but that's real. Oh, yeah. That stadium yep. is the real deal. Obviously, you know that. Do you think they have enough to make it to be the number one seed? Because this AFC is packed, Alex, yep. packed out here. I know, I know, uh, I think a lot of fans out there looked at like this Chiefs offense and it, it hadn't looked like itself up to this year. But the crazy thing is this, that's the number two defense in the NFL, Pat. They have the number two defense in the NFL. Like when's the last time we gave Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Travis Kelsey the two defense? They're playing unbelievable. They have 15 guys that have catches this year. Like, you know, 14 of them not named Travis. It's a cast of characters. I know it's young, but it's coming on. And, and make no doubt about it, the best football player on the planet is named Patrick Mahomes. Like, uh, listen, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it looks like all roads are going to go through Arrowhead. And again, they, they got a great fan base. It's a, that's a monster. Okay, let's dive into that Patrick Mahomes thing a little bit because obviously we were a part of the crew that was like, what are we doing? You played your best football with Andy Reid. You were in the MVP conversation. You guys were playing so good. You actually rested the last game against the Broncos when Patrick yeah. got his first official start. And then all of a sudden they trade you out of town. And we are, we as a bunch of doofuses in Indiana, we're like, what are we doing? Alex Smith is yeah. playing his best football right now. This Chiefs team is rolling. Andy Reid seems to be the right guy to get the most out of him. Then you get shipped out of there. Were you obviously pissed about this whole thing? Did you see what was coming with Patrick Mahomes? I don't want to go but too far in the past, but we haven't really got a chance to no, chat. Like, We're big fans of yours, by the way, yeah. but we haven't yeah. got a chance to chat about that. How did that whole thing go from your side, personally? Yeah, I mean, go ahead. what the hell were they thinking? You know, like, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what was going on in my mind, you know, like, what the hell? Uh, listen, I, I mean, obviously I knew when they drafted him, you know, that the, the time was running. And at that point, anyway, I was in my 13th year. Like, you're not guaranteed anything. Like, if, if I didn't play good football, they were going to find somebody that, that could. And so uh, I knew I had that year to kind of make the most of it and ended up having a great season. And, and I think, obviously, couldn't get it done in the playoffs, which was kind of the story of my time in Kansas City, right? A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of great regular season wins and couldn't quite get it done in the playoffs. And so they decided to make the change. But I think at the back half of that year, to answer your question about Pat, you started to see, uh, like, all of a sudden he's making these no-look passes, you know, across the middle. He's running scout team. And I'll never forget, like, Eric Berry coming up to me. He's like, hey, man, you got to come see this, this throw he made. And, and literally he's throwing 20-yard dig routes across the middle, no-look in, guys. Uh, just rare, rare talent. And then I think for me, the work ethic, right? Like, that, that's the thing no one talks about. Pat, 
that's obviously a, a unique, again, physical talent, but like great work ethic, great character, and an immense competitor. This guy's the first guy in the building. Uh, great dude, incredibly humble, and, and I think when you looked at it like that, like it was only a matter of time, man. He's he's relentless. Eric Berry coming up to you and being like, Alex, listen, <laughs> oh, I don't want to have to do this, but you need to see what this guy <laughs> yeah. do that just did. We've heard that story from numerous people that were on the Chiefs, but everybody sang your praises as well. Yep. And that's why it was like such an interesting decision, especially where it was. It's obviously going on to work out for them and for you. Look at you. You're on the Pat McAfee show. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> You're a legend, Alex. You're a legend. Ty has a question for you. Alex, when you look at all the rookie quarterbacks in the NFL right now, um, obviously, like, situation matters, play calling matters, and the guys around you matter. But going into the year, no one gave C.J. Stroud any chance to do anything with the Texans this year. And a lot of us were talking, hey, you know, Bryce Young and this Carolina team, they could be a dark horse in the NFC South. Why do you think C.J. Stroud has been so successful with the Texans? And why do you think Bryce Young has struggled so much in Carolina? Yeah, listen, I mean, I think one of the great rewards when you're an early draft pick is you go to terrible football teams, mm -hmm. and, and it's hard, and especially if you're playing early. And I totally agree with you. The one I did not see coming is C.J. Stroud in this Houston Texans team. Like, when you have a first-time head coach, a first-time offensive coordinator calling plays, and a first-time rookie quarterback, like, that, that trifecta is usually a recipe for a disaster. And uh, they have defied the odds. I, I had to give hats off to D'Amico Ryans, like the way he has that defense plan. And then Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator down there who came from San Francisco, again, running that Shanahan system, has done an unbelievable job. And then obviously C.J. Stroud, like being prepared, uh, the run he had to start the season, not making those mistakes that, listen, I lived through. I did, I did them for years. It's hard. Uh, you press, you try to do too much. And he's just showed unbelievable maturity uh, playing there. And so like, again, hats off to them. I love what, I love what he's doing, but on the flip side of that, like Bryce Young, it's, it's tough, man. Like, uh, listen, playing as a rookie, the, it's not very good around you. I know Adam, I love Adam Thielen, but like, that's his best playmaker. Um, whoa, obviously it was, whoa, it was whoa, don't be so racist, whoa. Alex. Why? Cause he's white. <laughs> Jeez. That was just, wow. Alex. Wow. High motor, high motor. <laughs> lunch box, lunch box. Yeah. Comes yeah. in with his hard hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great route runner. Oh, first God. guy in, yeah. last guy out. Gonna catch everything that comes yep. in there. Uh -huh. But I understand yep. what you're saying, though. I think a lot of people have echoed those sentiments. It's like, is Bryce Young set up for success as much as C.J. Stroud is? I think coming into the season, we would have wrote both of them off. Yeah. But what C.J.'s been able to do seems to be incredible. We haven't given up on Bryce Young, though. Dude. You're uh, you. I, you. No, I, I like Bryce. I like Bryce a lot. This guy uh, did. Yeah, this heard that. Did. Yeah. Shirtless guy in Utah said he's given up on him. Just, just want to let you know that. I have not. I think Bryce is a stud. Um, I, again, like it, I think there's an argument to be made here. Like playing week one is tough. Again, like it, it just, I, you know, for me, I lived it too. It, it's hard to play through this whole like baptism by fire. Hey, just go out there and tough it out while you make these mistakes and get crushed. Um, I don't think it's always a recipe for success. Like look, look at Pat. You know, you sit for a whole year. Like, again, he's the you know, greatest player on the planet. Like, he didn't play as a rookie. Um, I, I think you invest in so much in these these top picks, especially Bryce. Like, they traded up to get him. I, you got a great guy in Andy Dalton. I don't know why you don't sit and play, you know, have him watch and develop and learn. But, obviously, that ship has passed, uh, has sailed, and uh, he's out there. I, I love what he's doing, though. They need to add some pieces around him and, and continue to build it. So I said that if Andrew Luck could have watched Peyton Manning for a year, that would have benefited him forever. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen with Andrew Luck and with the way the everything kind of unfolded. But it was like the off the field stuff, like in the meetings, in the building, what you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say. Did you take a lot of pride in doing that for Patrick Mahomes? Well, you know, like it's funny. It's not it's not anything. I, it wasn't like I was in the meeting room, like whispering in his ear the secrets of playing quarterback. Like, I, I think that kind of gets twisted. Um, you know, it's, it's the front row seat. Like, when you know this, Pat, like when the quarterback room is tight, like everywhere I, we did everything together. We lifted together. We did meetings together. Like he saw me, our lockers were right next to each other. So when I'm sitting there talking to the media, he obviously literally has a front row seat. So I think it's just that, that obviously visual and exposure to a guy week in and week out going about his business. And he got to take what he liked, right? Like I'd been doing it for 13 years. He got to see how I handled an entire year of football, the ups, the downs, the wins, the losses, the grind. And like, he got to take what he wanted and implement it. And like things he didn't, he could, 
he could kind of, you know, obviously let go, but it, it, it literally is, you know, it's mentorship, right? Like again, he, professional quarterback is a different animal and he got a front row seat for a year. And, and, and again, like when he, when he did start that last game of the year against the Broncos, which he's never lost to, by the way, um, <laughs> till that day, uh, you know, like he hit the ground running. He doesn't have the scar tissue. He hasn't been out there just getting beat up. Like I, Again, I, I just I, I love that model. I'm a fan of it. Um, again, you invest so much in these QBs. I don't know why you wouldn't try to ensure everything that, they, that they're set up for success. I do like that he took that left-handed throw from you. Scramble. Yeah, yeah the no-look stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone, someone had to teach it to him. Yeah, and like the balance on one hand, reach for a touchdown, like that's straight out of the Alex Smith yep. book. Absolutely. Bingo. Yeah. Every day. In Every off, day on the practice field. The off balance. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, arm. the Gumby, the, the roll to your left and just whip a ball to the backside <laughs> hash on the run. like <laughs> Alex you know, Smith. Bingo. That's yeah. what I think every time I'm watching. Yeah, yep, you're welcome, right. Casey. Yep. Uh, you're talking about mentorship, though. There's a good one happening here. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Alex, obviously you know, I know, the people know. Utah's probably going to the college football playoff this year if we had to guess. Damn right. Yeah, it, it just makes the most sense, I'd say. But right now, obviously, Cam Rising isn't playing. When you mentioned mentorship and he went through a difficult injury and Pat mentioned, you know, your hamstring being on your shin, uh, (laughs) have you talked to Cam Rising at all? Have you guys kind of communicated since January when he got hurt? And do you kind of think that him having some time to not have the game might help him in the long run because he knows how much, you know, it means to him? Yeah, Cam Cam and I uh, know each other well, get along great. He's a great kid. You know, the crazy thing with NIL now is all of a sudden, you know, you're doing marketing deals with these guys in college, like uh, appearances and stuff. Um, Cam's a great kid, man. He, like, took us to back-to-back Rose Bowls. Uh, he, he'll be in, in the lore of Utah forever. Um, and, and I think, like, as we all learned, like, his knee injury was way worse than we thought. Like, that was a much bigger surgery uh, that he went through. And, and, and I know we were all hopeful that he could come back this year, but... Uh, his health is most important, right? Like, I hope he gets back healthy. I hope it, it, it continues to progress and he can get back to the player he was, uh, which was unbelievable. Um, so I haven't talked to him since he kind of got shut down for the season. Uh, I know he's frustrated, but again, I hopefully he can come back healthy. Who knows what the future holds for him. But we, we got the pig farmer at QB, and, and he's not scared. Stud. There's, actually, there's actually a pig walking around. It. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Let's Let's go. Pig there Let's go. And I don't, to be clear, I don't know if you want to be the pig in the pig farming yeah, situation. I don't think so. I do appreciate it. And you brought up the injury to Cam, and there was an Aaron Rodgers modalities uh, sign that was over my shoulder here. He's going through an Achilles rehab, yeah. and rehab is never fun for anything. I think people just yeah. always say, hey, you know, projections, it'll be back uh, three to four months. Nobody talks about those three to four months, about how isolated, how lonely, the pessimism yeah. that could potentially drop into your mind. And anytime injuries are talked about, we have to. Hey, you have your hamstring right now as a shin, and and I, it's a well, doc. Hey, we you're a it? legend, bro. Yeah, yeah. You hold it up. Oh. And then what? Your first game back, you're putting Aaron Donald on your back like a backpack, <laughs> basically just testing it out immediately. The whole football world watched and was like, Oh no, oh, oh no. Did you feel all of us on your side? through the rehab of that thing because we were and obviously it's well documented but how many times through that did you think to yourself there's no way i'm going to be able to play football again because you're an inspiration to all of us whenever we go through something you need to remember that yeah. honestly thank you Beth. I, I, i'm glad you brought up pessimism because like that's and that's what rehab's filled with doubt right like doubt that you'll ever be the same doubt that you'll ever reach your goals um and for me, forget football. Like, it was like doubt that I'll ever be able to play with my kids and chase after them and play catch with them and, like, go on a walk with my wife. Um, and, and that entire process is filled with that. You build up these walls of all these things that you'll never be able to do again. And that's part of the process of working through those. And, you know, you bring up the Aaron Donald moment when I got tackled. Like, the crazy thing about that, I mean, I, I went through that last final wall of, of getting tackled, like literally two years before the last time I stepped on a field, my leg shattered, and here I am in front of a national TV audience. I'm going to run out there. I had never been tackled, right? Like I, QBs don't get tackled in, on, on the practice field. There wasn't a preseason that year because of COVID. And so to go out there and experience that um, and to feel the love, like certainly of all my teammates, the people that have been there along the way over that two-year process, and certainly the outreach of everybody out there, the fans, like, Man, I was scared as hell, Pat. Like I have to, I have to be honest with you, right? Like, 
you know, running out there, that that's a part of it. And, and I don't want to pretend like it wasn't. Uh, but to work through that process, I'm so lucky and grateful. That that moment right there, as scary as it was, like has changed my life going forward. Because um, I, you know, I, finding out that I got back up, that I'm okay, um, and, and I'll have that with me for the rest of my life. And I get asked all the time, like, why the hell did you come back and play? You know, um, and it was for that. It was, you know, I didn't want to carry that doubt that I was fragile, uh, that I was immune compromised for the rest of my life, and like. I'm uh, I'm so much of a better dad to this day because of it. Hell yeah, Alex. That was awesome, man. They put the photo up there of your current chin, and I don't want to say I almost vomited, but in, in the same exact <laughs> sentence, it's like, that is such a great depiction of just, like, willpower, bro. Like, the amount of people that probably told you there's no reason to try to get back on the field, and you just said, nah, 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 and now you're saying it's made you a better human? You've made us better humans through the entire process. Yeah. Alex, okay? And you're Thank cussing you. on this show. It's disgusting. He yeah. said hell three times. You gotta be kidding me. I am so disgusted by it. AJ I heard that chant. I heard the chant going on there in Salt Lake. I bet you didn't expect that. Truck, that the, ducks. Truck the ducks. Truck the ducks. Truck. Yeah. Yes. Truck the ducks. Truck them over. That one. Let's go, you. Let's go, you. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Let's go, you. <laughs> I thought there was another. I was trying to think of what words yeah. rhymed in that rhythm. Shout out to them and shout out to you, bro. AJ has a question for you, Alex. Alex, uh, a guy that you played for for a little while, Jim Harbaugh, has been making some headlines lately. Just a bunch of rumors floating around going on. We yep. have no idea what's happening there, but what's he like playing for Harbaugh? I know he's uh, a very unique coach, like how he approaches his players. I remember playing against the Niners at times, listening to players talk about Jim Harbaugh and how awesome he was as a coach. What was it like and what do you think of everything that's going on in college football? Yeah, kind of a goofy situation, you know, there in college because it's funny, like at the NFL level, that's what you do. You send an advanced scout the week before, and he comes back with all kinds of intel. And it's just kind of part of the, the culture of pro sports. Like, sign stealings happened, you know, numerous times. Obviously, pro baseball, it's, it's a, a part of the culture. But even in, in the NFL level, it happens. Um, obviously, I had no idea that there were rules against it or what, obviously, um, you know, those were. But, I, Jim, listen, Jim's quirky. He's unique. Uh, everything he does is a little different, but uh, I loved playing for him. I, I got to be honest. Like he, he's an old school football coach. Everything's about ball. I like he had he had this great saying. Like he would always talk about. I mean, like his goal in life was to play football for as long as he could, and then he was going to coach football for as long as he could, and then he was going to die. <laughs> you know, like like I that, that's it. The gym. And, and in pro football, like there's so much noise, there's so much extra stuff around. It's getting into the building. So when you have a, a head coach that's that singularly focused on on football, like it, it made it fun. It, he kind of eliminated a lot of the BS, um, and and obviously it helps when you're winning ball games. He has some supporters, you know. Even here in Utah, there's a sign. Harbaugh didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now there's a lot, and there's somebody putting the U down there for Utah right in front of that. I like a little heel action. Oh, yeah. Harbaugh sent us, oh, okay, there, obviously. Great. It's becoming the storyline. If you follow that whole thing, Pete Thamel says, uh, officially, I do believe it has been reported, the NCAA has surveillance footage from a stadium of somebody that was utilizing the tickets that old Cuzzy bought, mm -hmm. filming a sideline with a, the whole game. Ooh, so, man. allegedly, that's, a le that's being reported now. More will roll out. If it does... With the hamburger situation, with yeah. uh, the FBI now is investigating, yep. uh -huh. hacking into a computer situation at uh, Michigan. That's a lot of stuff. This These are high crimes. High crimes, Pat. Huge. Buying cheeseburgers, yep. stealing signals. Huge deal. Yeah. Huge deal. But it is yep. something that could potentially send Harbaugh back to the NFL, maybe. You know, he's been kind of snooping around. Do you see that as a probability? And what do you think he would be like back in the NFL in this modern 2023 NFL? I, I have to think, like, listen, I, I, I haven't heard this out of his mouth, but just knowing Jim and how competitive he is and how close he got to a Super Bowl at the NFL level and then to kind of see it, you know, obviously pass him by, I, I, I got to think that isn't sitting right in his gut. And if the right situation comes up with the right ownership and the right quarterback, I, I, I think he's jumping at it. 
Which, to be honest. Which right. team you think? Because we got a Packers fan Brandon here. Yeah. The on. Bears, obviously. Come on. I mean, there's there's gonna be yep. a lot of teams that are gonna the, want Jim Harbaugh. The Chargers. Yep. Oh you know, like, boy. I, I gotta think. Like again, if, if if the right situation arises, like I would not be surprised if Jim tries to make one more run at it. Because I, again, I, I gotta think it's eating at him. Uh, you know. Wanna, there's a um, there's a pig that wants to say hello to you, Alex. Uh, this is the pig that has not been slaughtered by the pig farmer quarterback that you have. You can walk slower if you like. I get it. You're a pig. <laughs> Take your time. Live the gimmick. Yep. Take your time. We got nothing but time. Hey, here's a pig. Oh, there he is. Yeah. We know that person. Yeah. Is, that, is that the we quarterback? Know, we know that person. That's a QB. Uh, that is that is uh, that's Tommy, the truck driver. Oh. <laughs> oh. Appreciate you, Tommy. Tommy's been on the road, long time of college game day. Oh, yeah. Legend. Absolute badass legend. He actually is launching a... Tommy, 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 Tommy. Tommy's a legend. He dressed up like a pig, obviously. Any of those inflatable costumes? You know, I had one that was shaped like maybe a... Uh, body, organ. Right, sure. right. Right. And in college, you know, it's good for like the first hour while that fan's working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But once that fan stops, it's just a big yeah, get real mm, floppy. Yeah, yeah. It's all over all the place. Around, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. keep that battery in that pig, Tommy. Before we let you go, Alex, um, I won two Halloween costume contests. Is no that right? Deal. What was the other one? Yeah. I was one at a club, one at a house party. Okay. Downhill skier, right? Yeah, no, that, that was another year. <laughs> and then I was also uh, Lieutenant Dangle where I was operating traffic. Halloween's great in Morgantown. Yeah. I assume it's, it's fantastic here. Yeah. AJ, not when, that when type of When in West Virginia. Skiing. Have you ever been to West Virginia? I never have. It's on my bucket list. I came to Utah, Alex. Get your ass to West Virginia, I'm, dude. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. We're going to burn some couches. Well, we hope to get back to the burning couches days. I, I will certainly say that at West Virginia, I was there for a lot of them. Great times, both in the basketball and in the football. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was, fast, fast, I was on roller skiing. skate. Okay. I was on I was on roller blades. Hold night, Morgantown. Think about that. Middle of football season. Tell me if I was focused on the right things. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I need to. You listen. you've got inline skater written all over you. Yeah, well, they got these quads. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Do it. All right, Alex. Before we let you go. Um, can you please give us a prediction on the game tomorrow that is going to have not only Pac-12 championship implications, but college football yeah. playoff implications here in Utah tomorrow with Oregon and the Utah Utes, Alex? Yeah, I mean, I know Oregon's been putting up a bunch of points this year, but this is the first real defense that they've played. Uh, it's, going to be a, it's going to be a run fest. Lots of run. Lots of run game. Uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't think they're putting up to 33. I think that they're averaging. Um, I think it's going to be a tight ball game, though, right? Like, listen, every, every game this year has been that. They're, they're a good football team. Bo Nix is in his ninth year of playing quarterback <laughs> at the college level. Uh, I mean, I think he was in college when I was. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, I think the youth pull it out. I think it's another, like, you know, late, late field goal, late drive. You know, our defense is going to have to make a stand. I, I like 28-24 Utes. 28-24 Utes from this man. Okay. Let's go Utah! Let's go Utah! Let's go Utah! Let's go Utah! There's one BYU person. Let's go Utah! Let's go Utah! Let's go Utah! Let's go Utah! Alex, thank you for joining us, man. Yeah, uh, fellas, thanks for having awesome. me. We're massive fans of yours. We hope they put you on TV more. You deserve it. You're great at what you do. Your career backs it up, and we appreciate your insight. Ladies and gentlemen, comeback player of the year, three-time pro Bowl, Alex. Smith. Appreciate it, fellas. I love Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah legend. I legitimately love Alex. Though. Pretty awesome, like, hearing the reaction. Oh, yeah. You know, because he, he played here way before all these Yeah, he said, he said that uh, his team... All right. There we go. Yep, yep sure. Good crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great crowd. Can't believe it, really, to be honest. Uh, neither can I. Good, good, good. Crowd. Couple fun facts about this university and this state. Uh, this is actually the oldest state university west of Missouri in the United States of America. Wow. That's a big area. Another fun fact about Utah, uh -huh. uh, marijuana carries like a year long prison sentence. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I had to look up. 
make sure you know where you're at. That's right. Huh? And Smart. what you're doing. And once again, the most important stat that we have learned is 80 straight yep. sellouts. Wow. This football team. Wow. wow. Seriously. The good sellouts. Yeah, like you watch North Carolina play against Virginia. We go, North Carolina's undefeated in the national mm -hmm. championship conversation. Drake May, Heisman candidate, absolute stud. A guy who could have left and said, I'm staying in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Did not have a full stadium no. in that particular game. You look around some primetime games, you look up in the top corners, it is completely empty. You got some student sections that leave at halftime if their team is up just a little bit. It's like these people, these people have been fighting for respect in the football community world for a while, and I'm very sorry that I have not shown enough respect, but from this point forward, we gotta respect these damn youths out here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're talking about leaving at halftime. Not the must, baby. Must doesn't leave. No way. They would never. Ty, your thought. Well, I was just going to say, you know, coming out here, you just assume that, hey, it's either you soak or you go watch a Utah football game. But I think that's wrong. I mean, this place is beautiful. I can see why these people showed up in droves. And, I, I mean, 80 consecutive sellouts, that's absolutely bonkers. Stanford Steve is walking in over here. He might have just got done soaking himself. Makes right. sense. Oh. Hey, hey, Stanford Steve. Steve's gonna have to win some bets this week. Yeah, he better. <laughs> I love, I love Steve. Yeah, he's got one pick and he knows what to pick. I love, yeah. I don't. 18 in the last 19. Yes. 29 in the last 30. Yep. What? Utah has won in this particular city. Uh -huh. That's something to think about, even if Oregon's coming to town. And I don't think anybody can really, you know, put over enough like. I'm a big fan of that Oregon football team. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Big fan. Coach Dan Lanning. Dog. I love everything about him. I appreciate the way he talks, how he acts. I do. And that Bo Nix, you talk about him playing for eight years. He is very, very talented, very, very comfortable what he does. And I like that Dan Lanning won for it against Washington on that fourth down in the fourth quarter. It's like they have the right mindset. Steve, did you know that this place was going to be like this before getting out here? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You went to Best, Stanford. Yeah. Best home crowd in the conference. Hell yeah. The crowd in the conference is going away. Uh, no. <laughs> Steve, Steve, too soon. Steve, uh, early pick, early pick for tomorrow. Whittingham Landing, fist fight. Who wins? Oh. <laughs> Win. Okay. Okay. Right. Smart. Right. Thank right. you, Steve. Smart. That was a good pick. That was a good pick. All right, we're going to uh, commercial here at the end of hour one, which I would say has been a success for yeah. Salt Lake City. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the best shot that has come from behind me in any place that we've been to. Uh, Ohio State was yeah. obviously incredible because of the amount of snow and the weather that people had to go. Alabama was the first one. It was filled up. Colorado oh, yeah. had great views and great people, but this was not expected. This is very much appreciated. And there's a lot more where this came from. Steve Smith will join us in the second hour. Yes. Cam Rising will join us in the second hour. We'll break down all the other stories. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take three. Thirty people moving through the back end of the business field here. And in the middle of it is this black Samoan man who has become the most famous human on earth. Great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the GOAT, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. There's thousands. of people skipping class to come see your big ass. Listen, there is thousands and thousands of you skipping class. It doesn't matter if they go to class. Moana is one of the best animated films of all time. What? Okay, can't, can't wait for the live action. Thank you, yes. But we, you're welcome. We talk about Moana. What can I say except yeah. you're welcome. And we talk about Mana. Honestly, listen, kid, I could go on and on. I can't explain every natural phenomenon. Yeah. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was Maui just messing around. I could in a buried its guts, sprouted a tree. Now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. Oh. And the temperature here on my skin oh. is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been to make everything happen. Look at the me, 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 Maui just tick it, it tapping. That's it. Wow. <laughs> Still got it. I'm 
the Samoan side, Polynesian side, we have a word called mana. Mana is spirit, mana is power, mana comes from in here. It's the thing that gives you goosebumps, it's that thing you feel, it's that thing when I walked out and we felt this thing, this yeah. is mana. Yeah. This is mana. It, it's very, very, very real, and you could feel it. Mwah. Little things like I don't get driven anywhere. I don't want to get driven anywhere. I don't like chauffeurs. Keeps me in my way, just a little grounded. Like I could drive myself everywhere and not telling some guy, "Hey, take me here, take me there." That is something I'm gonna start saying, like, "Yeah," because when they open you your door, you feel so bad. I can open my own door, dude. They're trying to be courteous; it's their job. But also, the day I stop opening my own door is the day I become big old bitch. Here we go. That's a big cup. Oh. Oh. Here's the iconic sound, you guys know it. Oh! This special Terramana toast goes out to Passion. Congratulations on your show. Very proud of you, very proud of all you boys. And to all of you. Love you guys, thank you for the support. Keep kicking ass. Cheers. In my world, when I sit down and we're talking about movies and all this other shit, it's never this. It's never this, this, back with the boys, and you. So, I appreciate it, and this one's to you. Thank this you, boys. You, pal. Cheers. You. Cheers. All right, we're going to take five-minute break here. Oh, hold on, one more. If you smell what the rock is. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how Cubans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hour two of this program starts now. Football! It is happening in this city tomorrow as Oregon and Utah will battle for Pac-12 supremacy and college football playoff conversations will certainly be on the line. Last night, the Buffalo Beals snuck out of Western New York with a big time dub over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's an entire weekend slate of college ball that's going to be electrifying. There's a Sunday NFL slate that's going to be must watch. There's going to be an overreaction Monday. There's going to be a lot of things, but right now, alongside myself, Boston Connor, Ty Schmidt, Tone Diggs, A.J. Hawk, is a Utah legend whose name, I believe, is on the stadium in there a couple different times. Hell yeah! NFL legend and icon, Steve Smith Sr. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. And I mean, there's a lot of things I was ex I was expecting to talk to you about, like immediately upon you arriving here. Like, man, this is cool. <laughs> this place yeah. is really cool. I was going to talk to you about how awesome the views are. We will have to put those conversations on hold because these Utah folks were saying, "Good luck, Jerry, Judy." Yeah, that was nice. Hey, yes. Oh. A couple of them said that's not what they were saying. They were saying something else that sounded like that. What? But that is the topic of conversation, I guess, for them whenever they see you. Because everybody knows you, Steve. You're an incredibly tough dude. You're a guy who's very passionate. What? You're very loyal. What? You love the game. What? You work your ass off. What? You're a legend in the NFL and in college. Like, you're a guy that whenever a situation like that pops up, it obviously becomes massive news, not only because we all believe that you could probably win the fight against them, <laughs> but also because there's a chance that that could happen. 
the Jerry Judy situation, where are you at it on it now? And when it was happening, were you confused by it all? Well, look, I, I appreciate the opportunity. This will be the first and only time I really address it. So I appreciate you giving me that opportunity. Thank you. That's because you're uh, there. Yeah. And, then, and then one of the things, man, is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, I grew up in L.A. Okay. Um, but I went, I, I got my opportunity for, because of some strangers donated some money at the University of Utah. And the University of Utah decided that I was good enough that I got the opportunity to get education and play um, college football. And then obviously going on to play professional football. So for me, the University of Utah, um, whether you believe this is a good school or not, this is the school that gave me my opportunity. So that's who I am through and through. So I'm always going to respect and honor my school. I and they're always, with my school. And they're always going to have your back, too, from what yes. it sounded like as soon as you yeah, got so it. So I, I appreciate that, and I love the fact that um, game day, you guys are here, yeah. man. It's just amazing. Um, but as far as the Jerry Judy thing, this is what happened. Uh, a, a, a couple of months ago prior to, you know, all, the, all of us now athletes have a podcast, and so I was doing my podcast. and That's a I, good one, by the way. Appreciate that, and, and I love breaking down wide receivers. And so I, I had discussed, um, I had discussed a lot of wide receivers, and Jerry Judy was one of those guys. And what I said and how I said it, it wasn't the best way how to say it. Okay. Right. And so because of that, um, I really kind of, I, I really didn't pay it any attention because it had kind of come and gone. And then when it kind of led up to this year, I had heard some things that it just didn't sit well with him. And so um, I'm okay with it. You know, my foundation, we do a fantastic job in Charlotte. Um, we have a 12,000 square foot uh, mental health facility. So I do counseling, right? Nice. Nice. And so, and, and the reason I do counseling is the stuff I dealt with when I, was a, when I was a young man growing up, man, it has informed me to behave and respond in ways that sometimes is not great. Okay? <laughs> And, um, and you can go Google that and do whatever you want with it. That's fine. I saw. And, and, and so what happened is as I did that, I was like in my counseling, it was like, man, when something's going, when, when there's a problem, you have to address the problem, but you got to fix it the way you addressed it. And so it was publicly. Mm -hmm. And so okay. what I wanted to do, because I didn't want to, as people were saying, being goofy or say, uh, be, I'm being goofy or I'm being fake, I'm, I'm never going to walk back what I said. Because you can't. It's already said. You know, what I wanted to do, though, because I'm an old school guy, and when I say old school, like, I carry a money clip. I, I, I have a, t in my office, I got a ton of papers. Like, I'm not really a great gadget guy. Okay. And so what I like to do is, I like to, I like to look people in the eye, whether it's good or bad, to get a, really, uh, get a real sense of who they are. Even in my uh, business world of investments, I meet with people to kind of really know, yes. to get a sense of them. And so when I approached Jerry Judy, I wanted to say that I apologize because it was the type of words that I used that obviously did not sit well with him. And that's more important than walking back my words because you, if you can look, if you could talk about a man, you gotta be able to look that man in the eye and say, say something and give him an opportunity. And so when he responded the way he did, which I won't get into, the totality and also what all was said is when he said, I was like, all right. And so I didn't handle, right? I was, I, I was getting light skin. I didn't handle it. I was very emotional. <laughs> play setting. And so I, I came back on the air. I was like, all right, cool. And so for me, this would be the last time. I want, I want to apologize. And this is my apology. And I got to do it the same way I, I showed my tail publicly is I apologize for how I said it, what I said, and it didn't sit well. And that wasn't my intent. But it, what's done is done, and, I, and I'm sorry. And it makes me more aware that I gotta be more, I gotta use different words yeah. and not make it come across like I'm jealous or envious of the current players because I'm not. I actually appreciate and love the current players. There's a few players that I've said things about that I've talked to personally, and they said, man, I appreciate that. Because I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm going to run and hide because I'm tough. I just don't like having 
drama. I don't, I don't like yeah. having that drama. Yeah. And then feeling like you got to duck and hide mm -hmm. when you're in different facilities. And so that, that was the whole purpose. And so it didn't go great. And so that's, that's what hey, it is. That's big. Nice. Yeah. That's adult. That's maturity. That's maturity. Need more of it. I will say, there were some of us, you know, who uh, not only grew up, but got a chance to experience a tail end while being in the league. They were hoping we'd see old, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No. Old Steve. You know, hey. Akeem Tlaib. Hey. Yeah. Hey. You were one of our guys in the NFL. You know, hey. this celebrity boxing. <laughs> Getting thrown out of the preseason game. Stuff yeah, like that's that. What that's I'm what saying. we're used yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, super. I, was, I thought, honestly, it was beautiful. Yeah, You got to too. sit with your son in the box afterwards, remember? Oh, that was awesome. My son, who's 20, is uh, going to be 26 now, uh, this November, he... He stayed up to I think like two o'clock that night, waiting to see himself on sports. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's awesome. That is awesome. It's a beautiful move too you did with your family. But I want to let you know what you just did for Jerry Judy. Good for the NFL as yeah. well. Oh yeah. Good for the NFL. Because I'd like to let everybody know now that we talk into a microphone every single day at the. I mean, I, I just, a lot of people hear everything I yeah. say. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So it's like. Anytime I talk about anybody, it is a whole different animal because I'm like, if they get texted what I just said to them, are they going to be able to catch the tone or the context yeah, yeah. of the words that I'm saying? It's difficult for that whenever you're trying to talk about the sport that you love too in the league that you love, not to be a little bit intense about it. But I think Jerry Judy will hear that, and I think he'll say, hey, all good, Steve Smith. Yep. You're Steve Smith Sr. Now, with that being said, he is from South Florida, you know, so I think he's got a little bit of the same hey that you potentially had, and he's going to hope that his career ends up like yours. Let's move along here. This place is awesome. Yeah. Oh, Utah, I'm real. Utah's dope, man. Yeah. You said you're from L.A. I'm from L.A. I'm, I'm, I'm from L.A., 126 in Avalon. Just, okay, okay, so I've seen a lot of documentaries. What's that mean? <laughs> okay. What's that mean? What, what is no, it? I was just telling you, 349 East, 126. <laughs> that's, that's where I grew up. So great place, it sounds like. It's fantastic. You yeah. should go doing it. You should go at night. Me? Okay. <laughs> With a pocket full of cash. Yeah. <laughs> A couple people have told me I'm good in any hood, you know, I think a bit, but I'm not Let me tell you sure if that's true. Yeah, Let me tell I'm not sure Pat. if that's true. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm from Pittsburgh, I uh, live in Indiana now, mm -hmm. never been to Utah, okay? And when I was flying out here, I was doing research on the place and the school, yeah. and we were all kind of chit-chatting on the plane about it. We had no idea about the football community that's here, and it's hard not to just ask about that, Yeah. but like... 80 straight sellouts, 29 to 30 wins. Like, what Witt is built here is one yes. that where they're expecting to win. Was it like this whenever you got here? Uh, Witt was the defense coordinator when I was here. What uh, years were you here? 1980. <laughs> no, 1999 uh, and 2000. Okay. Well, that's when we were, we had just left, uh, what was it? Uh, it was a whack, and then yeah. went to the Mountain West. And so it, it was, man, I had a fantastic time, man. It was, it was one of the beautiful things about playing here uh, at that time uh, was we played teams like Wyoming Air Force where you had to, I, I really left University of Utah understanding how to read coverages. Not just being athletic, but understand we play Air Force. Is Air Force a juggernaut? No. But when you play your arms, armed forces, Air Force, we were told you cannot they will not make the same mistake twice. So if you run a trick play, it has to work, mm -hmm. right? They're disciplined, uh, playing. I remember playing Wyoming and wearing warm-ups, and I hear doop, cloop, cloop, and I look. They are chiseling ice boulder <laughs> out of the end zone. Oh, yeah. That's I have nice. never experienced that in L.A., right? When I came on my recruiting trip here, uh, it, was, um, it was winter. Man, I had a, remember the Gap jackets? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Where you can take it and fold it up and unzip it and put it in. Oh, yeah. Put it in your mm -hmm. Yeah. That did not hold up here in Utah. <laughs> yeah. So but it's beautiful right now. And yeah. this is why I learned how to ski. I got an epic pass. I sneak in. I sneak in to Utah every winter okay. and ski. I get about five or six miles in in a day. Man, we have a great time here. Cross country? Is that, you're cross country ski? No, no, I'm just skiing all day, bro. Yeah. You're hitting the slopes. I'm hitting the slopes, man. I've never done it. It's not my never. Never, no. You, you can't call stuff? yourself a real athlete, then, huh? What's that? 
Whoa. Did you see a catch? I just made a catch in cowboy boots during a commercial I was, break. I was in the green room. You would have shit your pants. If you oh, wow. They seen it. Hold on, bro. Why, seen how, it. why so aggressive? Yeah. <laughs> I apologize for the way that I said. I got a lot of witnesses. <laughs> AJ has a question for you, Steve. Steve, you said you came out of college were able to read defenses. Do you think guys now coming out of college, are they more equipped or, or less equipped hmm, uh, maybe back then? I know offenses are way different yeah. now, how they do it. But when you see these young guys, a lot of guys come in from day one and it's like, bam, superstar yeah. from the jump sometimes. I, I just think it, it depends on the college that you're at and what, they're, what the coaches are emphasizing. You know, if you're looking at something, I, I don't know necessarily, but it's hard to really kind of say when you see college football now and when you watch them, everybody's looking to the side. No one's actually looking at the defense and seeing the movement. What are they looking at on the side? Some pitcher or... And then people are stealing it. Stealing yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so all of that, I, I think it depends uh, where, you know, how good your coaches are. But I, I think most guys had a, a true understanding. But I was able to, you know, cover one, two, three, four. I, I really understood what two buzz, six buzz, two Kathy... Uh, one robber. Oh, are some, are I some, love the one are, robber. Are some guys out there just playing? Are there some receivers that were watching the NFL that can't uh, really figure it out and they're just relying on athletic ability alone? Absolutely. I mean, I, I was, even though I knew how to read defenses, there were still times I still didn't know what I was looking at just yeah. because it was moving 100 miles an hour. Yeah. So it took some time. Hey, Dalton Kincaid had a big coming out. Oh, party yes, he wow. did. <laughs> you see the, you see the, uh, the toe tag. Swag? Oh, yeah. Hey, yes. he's doing CBS News now. Hey, Nate Burleson, proud yes. of you, buddy. Yeah. Representing hey, the Nate NFL. Is Good luck. Yeah. Yes. Everything. Toe drag swag, though. Yes, out of Dalton yeah. Kincaid. Coming out of Utah, obviously, everybody talked highly of him. Whenever he got drafted to the Bills, we had Brandon Bean on the show. Oh. He said he's going to be flanked out like a wide receiver. Yes. Player. He didn't even say, hey, we're worried about it. Last night, whenever he, they needed a run, they'd bring in an offensive lineman. They put him out at wide receiver. Yes. They're talking about him being a real X factor now, like going forward. Like, they are very excited for him to become. I don't want to say it, but like, like a Travis Kelsey or like yeah. something said, like he, that. Gronk, like they're. You see what Dave, uh, uh, Gabe Davis was able to to do. Look at Dave, uh, at Gabe Davis. He's only had really 100 yard game in the last four years, so he hasn't really stepped up into that position that you anticipate. He has the ability. He has the physical attributes. He has the mind. But for whatever reason, they, uh, it hasn't really translated. And I think Don Kincaid gives him that opportunity to be a possibly a number two or a number three that's reliable. You look at what the Buffalo Bills have been doing the last couple of years. They've auditioned probably 30 guys in the slot receiver because they're looking for – uh, a guy that can carve oh, that up the middle, huh? and they haven't had it. And so with Dalton being available, I remember uh, the Buffalo Bills were extremely excited and seeing that possibility of having someone that can step up if Gabe continues to go where he's going, Stephon Diggs, and now uh, – with Don Kincaid, so I, I believe he's he's a great fit for them. It's like another checkdown. You know, everybody yeah. talks about Josh Allen being able to move, but having somebody in the middle get open, especially oh, yeah. with the modern rules, it's like that's an easy outlet. You saw it a couple of times last night. Josh Allen, I'm scrambling. That would normally be a Josh Allen run, and then who knows what happens at the end of it? Either a yeah. big shot, maybe a fumble, maybe he skirts out of bounds, maybe he gets the edge and scores a touchdown. Literally, any of that is possible. Instead, Dalton Kincaid drag right across, right in perfect unison, bang, hits him. Feels like the chemistry is only growing between those two. and he was looking hot originally because they but they slid uh, he was looking hot, like me right now in this sun what you're saying i'm looking hot right now i've been doing a lot of arms steve you really yeah i could tell yeah see it's how you say things this is jerry judy yep. this is you know what i mean it's how you say stuff it's how you it's how you say stuff. i just said i yeah, but it was how you said it. Sounded sarcastic. Say yeah, you yeah. said I got small ass arms. Yeah. That's what you said. The look you had too. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. entire body. Uh -huh. <laughs> Listen, I don't trust anybody who's wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's bright out here. Look at all it this. It's bright Smart out here. Man. Speaking of, the Pit Vipers has a question for you. Uh, yes. uh, oh, please, but uh, I digress. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, you were a stud right off the jump when you got into the NFL. You didn't really need that kind of, you know, mentor. Oh, yeah, I did. I don't know what game you were watching. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I, I think I was about seven years old. So so I, I'm oh, glad. Wow. I was wow. going to say that's how you say things. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. That, and we're still on the same stage at 44. So there you I'm go. Low. Doing Boom. it. Yeah. Doing it. Still that. killing it. OG. Yeah. But did you have anyone at Utah or in the league at Carolina oh, at, that was showing you the way? Okay, at Utah, um, I had Ron, Mc, Ron McBride, who I still talk to. Vic, shout out to Vicky McBride. 
And then the guy who recruited me is uh, Fred Graves, who's like a father figure to me. Uh, that was the guy who was recruiting me. Um, Manny Hendricks, who's still here. I mean, I, I, I speak to a lot of people uh, still here at Utah. So, I mean, I can't sit here and say it was one pe person. You know, I'm old school, so it takes a community to raise a knucklehead. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, sure. and so that's what it was. How about in the NFL? Uh, NFL, uh, I'm going back to Charlotte uh, to, to – Honor Musa Muhammad and Julius Peppers going mm -hmm. in the Hall of Honor for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my big bro Musa Muhammad. Showing in you, you're already in there. So it's it's uh, there's there's a ton of people uh, that I can really I could I could reel off names. Uh, Isaac Bird, uh, Ricky Pro, Kevin Dyson, who was what? the first round draft pick yeah. from from Utah as well. Hell yeah. So, um, wait, were you always the like high school, college? NFL, what? he's got to see it. Ice Up Sun, obviously, I think is what is synonymous with yeah. him. Always a shit talker? Always had every sport did you play and how many sports did you play? Uh, well, I thought I was going to play basketball, but uh, I realized I couldn't play basketball. <laughs> uh, that, that I discovered that after tryouts. Okay. Uh, but my mom is one of 13. And, um, and being one of 13, it's uh, right now living. Uh, for the youngs, that's my mom's side of the family. It's about 65 of us. Oh, uh, it's a lot of stuff being said. <laughs> Spades, dominoes. Ooh. And so by the time I was probably 13 or 14, it was things being said on the domino card table, on the keynote table. Uh, Probably a 10-year-old or 13-year-old should not be here. Oh, so you've been <laughs> prolific. You were a phenom at this. You were no, I wasn't a phenom. You, just, you do the dozens, man. You, you, you do the dozens. You talk, you talk smack, take names. You make it personal. You, you go for the jugular. Like some people like to jab. I, look, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going 12 rounds. Yeah, we're going right. <laughs> we're Mike Tyson. Yep. We are Mike Tyson. Hey, we're man. not here for a long time. We're good. You slamming Domino? You, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to slam Domino's up. 50, you got trees on it. You're 13 <laughs> years old slamming dominoes in these people's faces on 136? Is, I mean, everybody's doing it. I respect it. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people have been, my I, I got an uncle who is, I think he's eight years younger than me. I mean, eight years older than me. So he's like my big brother. I love it. So hey, you're one on one, dude. Mm -hmm. Success story, too. Yeah. Hosting dude. everything, which we will dive in. Ty has a question for you. Steve, with the trade deadline coming up, you mm. know, a couple of these guys like Devontae Adams and yeah. DeAndre Hopkins, who, you know, people are talking about them getting moved, but who knows? And when they initially went to both of their respective teams, they were kind of the guys who it's like, hey, they're going to they're gonna get them over the edge and kind of get them to the playoffs. Mm. How many teams right now out there who need a guy you think are that close? to like go into the playoffs if they were to get a guy like DeAndre Hopkins or Devontae Adams? Well, the problem is you had an opportunity to get DeAndre Hopkins before the beginning of mm -hmm. the season, and you didn't, and there's reasons why that I, I'm not really privy to. But if you're looking for a guy now to get you over the top, right, I think it's great. But you got to ask yourself, if this guy is going to get me over the top, great example is the Dallas Cowboys. How can they get you over the top? There's no identity offensively. Right? You can't prepare for when your, guy, your top tier playmaker gets hurt. But there are some things with the Dallas Cowboys they are missing. And Derrick Henry cannot fix all the deficiencies for whatever reason that is going on because there's an expectation with the Dallas Cowboys, the way they've been playing, where they started off, that it's going to be pretty good. And unfortunately, it has not. The expectation and what's on the field has not aligned yet. So, you know, I don't think necessarily the teams that we're hearing about are going to make big moves. I think there's going to be two or three teams like the Philadelphia Eagles that quietly make a move mm. that can solidify and take them over the top. Kevin Byard is a hell of a move for oh them. My they God. have been so active at the yeah. deadline. And I was going to ask you, just to take it back to your maturity, if a team was to ask you about Jerry Judy, you know, trading for them, well, well, well yeah. cuz I remember you did <laughs> yeah. you did end your, <laughs> got brought up. before you said take send it back to the studio Garrett Fowler okay take it back to the studio there <laughs> you did talk about that but weapons on the move yeah. D hop I mean there's there's we just mentioned them all it's a lot of chatter the NFL isn't normally a place that makes a lot of moves no. do you think it's becoming one though it's, it's becoming a place where free agency and trade pick, uh, trading picks because I do think there's so many players in college who are undeveloped and, and just like anything else, you don't figure it out and you don't know what they are until they're in your building, which sometimes is a little bit too late. 
Oh. And so they're utilizing trading. You've seen teams trade and do it with the Los Angeles Rams. They've done it. Some other teams. It's benefited them, right, to get, to get the bag, the Super Bowl, reset, buy your uh, organization, head coach and general manager and those coaches some time when the lean years are coming to be able to rebuild, get some equity, sell off, and then restock and try to make a run for it again by getting young acquisitions at, uh, uh, on the cheap. How old are you right now? Uh, I'll be 45 next year. You can still cut? You can still uh, run some routes? I can still run some routes. Indianapolis Colts need a weapon. <laughs> I mean, we need a weapon bad, but right now is not the time for us to make no, a they, they First of all, they have someone. Josh Downs is making, great. He's doing f- fantastic in the slot. You got Alex, Pier- Alex Pierce. He's doing great out of the University of Cincinnati. And Michael, then, Pittman and Ma- Michael Pittman Jr. Contested King. Yeah. He's doing an outstanding job. And then you got Zach Moss from... University of Utah. Oh, oh Zach Moss is from here? Yes. Zach Moss is a... Yes. Wow, for sure. Hey, he's been doing... Yes. Hey, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you to and you guys. Then, you know, they're getting uh, Jonathan Taylor back. So I, I, I think... And they have black men back in the secondary. Who's from University of Utah as well? Uh, oh. uh, Julian. Julian? Yes. Are we sure? So we called him the wrong name. We called no, him the wrong we, name. Yeah, we called him the wrong name. No, we did. No, no, no. Yeah. this happened, Steve. We did. We caused beef with Mr. Blackman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was in Indianapolis. We were giving him a shout out. He had a massive play against the Packers. Yeah. As a rookie, yeah. And we were like, Justin Blackman, this guy. <laughs> oh, you he, called him the wrong name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we. I uh, mean, that's legitimate. Oh, well, and Justin Blackman. Not all black play. people look alike. Oh, oh, Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, hey, Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, don't get to say oh, that. We know the oh, Utah Jazz oh, play in Salt Lake City. <laughs> and those fans, they say certain stuff. But Justin. Yeah, Blackman, we've heard about the Utah Jazz fans. You know. You're one of those, huh? He's from Boston. He's from Boston. Oh, yeah. I know how it is out here. I know. Really? Yeah. How uh, is it? Do tell. <laughs> Do tell for you. There's one guy, uh, Russell care? Westbrook, who loves to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So yeah. you know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. No, yeah, okay. no I will say, I will say you did fans. make a uh, – you did compare yourself uh, – to a light skin comment earlier, so and I uh, took offense to that, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> me too. The lightest skin. So, <laughs> Tony has a question for you, Steve. You're Irish? Yeah. Okay. Diggs, please, please. No, get him, get him to stop looking at me. <laughs> talk, talk to him. Tell him to stop talking Don't. about white guys. <laughs> Steve, can we talk about your Ravens? Um, yeah. Lamar's looked really, really good. He's got yeah. Monken, new OC, and he's got probably the best weapons that I think he's ever had. Absolutely. What do you think about Lamar and that offense? And then I, I wanted to ask you about Zay Flowers coming out because a lot of people were comparing him to you. Do you like that? Do you hate that? Do you care about that at all? Or do you reach out to the guy when they care, compare him to you? I mean, I love Zay Flowers. I did a breakdown on, uh, on my podcast about him, what I really love mm-hmm. about him. He did a fantastic job. He's a guy that can get in and out of his breaks. He's a vertical threat. He's also a horizontal threat. His play speed is well beyond his time speed. He's physical. Getting him uh, the ball on the move. Also, he can run some great routes. Fantastic. Pure hang catcher. Mm-hmm. Just eye and hand coordination is off the charts. So I really love the kid. As hey, that was as, a great breakdown. As, as, thank you. As far as uh, comparing him to me, I, 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 there's, it, it's one of those things where I appreciate it. But then when I was playing, you know, it was kind of like, you know, who are you? Uh-huh. And, and, and you are, you're a short guy. You're not the prototype. And then all of a sudden now short guys are okay. So it's just I'm trying to figure out, you know, when was I in? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, though. So yeah. you work for the NFL Network now. Yes. You have your podcast cut to it. Yes. You are a very, I don't want to say well-read, but... It feels like every time I hear you talk, you've done your research. Are you still, like, watching film every day as if you're still a film. player? Do you feel like you have to do that? Is that, so like, just it, a part of you? Watching film, watching film builds my opinion. So when, I, when I'm looking at someone and I'm saying something, just like when I play, if I didn't like someone, it was because they were a good a, a DB. I watched, I watched them. And while, by watching them, it built up my, my professional dislike. <laughs> right, nice. and so well, what, what? Me for me, watching film is essential for be for me to be able to do my job. They don't think I watch film. I have the I think it's DVR Sports 360. Oh, oh yeah, DV Sport. Yeah, mm-hmm. him too. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I got that. It used to be all 22. So I I, I have all that stuff, and I watch it. Now I'll, I'll watch. I watch guys' stance, how they line up, the releases. I even watch when they cut it short, when they drop it, why, how. I, that's how I get comfortable. Yeah, but you love ball. I think you have to do this. Yeah. I think you're going to have to watch film and stay engaged with football forever, probably. No, I don't, I don't have to. What are you going to do, go ski? 
I love skiing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> AJ has a question for you, Steve. You mentioned guys that are, you know, maybe on the shorter stature. Hold on, hold on. What? I didn't answer his question, though, about you uh, the Ravens. I apologize. Oh, yeah. Lamar, Lamar, and, yeah. and the reason why is because you gave me a double barrel question, I did. So, which means I only remember the, the, first, second. the second yeah. question. That's on mine. That's my so, fault. It's all right. Um, I respect you. I'm like that guy. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> so, but the Baltimore Ravens, everybody was expecting them to play well. It's, it's, it's just going to take time. Right, you got Zay Flowers at Boston College. OBJ, he was with the Los Angeles mm -hmm. Rams, or, and prior to that, he was hurt. And then uh, Nelson Aguilar was with New, New England. England Patriots. You got all these different people. Mark Andrews, he was with uh, Baltimore, but he was under Greg Roman. Mm -hmm. So I've said it, when Greg Roman's offense, if the middle linebacker or will linebacker comes and a nickel comes, in that old offense, that may mean that we're going to change it or we may stay. And so those rules and, re those rules and responsibilities may be a triangle on the octagon. But all of a sudden now with Munkin, when the Will linebacker comes, they may stay, but they're also squares and, and, and triangles. So it, it all varies. The rules and the system changes. And so you, the only way you're going to improve is allow time to really be there. How many triangles are there in an octagon? I was just saying that Different. Oh, you're saying like circle and a square? I was just saying it's different, bro. Apples and oranges. Or you, because you said they're squares and got it. Hmm. I just want to let you I'm a big shapes guy. I love shapes. Absolutely. I was like super pumped to dive into the shapes talk there. But it's more answers for the more, more sophisticated, I think, too, which feels like what he's been looking for for this long time. He's been very public about that. Yeah. Like, hey, because the contract that he was looking for, I think a lot of people were like, well, are they going to invest that into Lamar? Lamar represented himself. Congrats on being a great businessman. Yeah. Yeah. Lamar Jackson. Obviously, I love that. Not giving up a percentage to anybody but you and your family. I love everything about it. But what the word out of the camp was like, he wants a more sophisticated offense. He wants to be a pocket passer. It's like, they're giving him that. And he yeah. feels like he's really showcasing everything he's believed in himself. Detroit Lions said, beat me, which, beat me out of the pocket. And he ran through him out of the pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, AJ, go ahead. Uh-oh. I think we have a special guest coming, Pat. Long hair, don't care. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen. A man who has won a Rose Bowl and a Pac-12 championship here in Utah at quarterback. But this year, he's rehabbing a completely slaughtered knee. Ladies and gentlemen, Cam Rising. Okay, this is a brand new helmet that's being released. Is this for the game tomorrow? Oh, this is the, this is the oh, helmet for tomorrow. Go. Kid with a mullet, wow. ain't no great mustache. Love it. Look Just caught that. that ball for Cam Rising. Um, we love Cam. <laughs> we love Cam. We love Cam. We love Cam. Okay. We love Cam. We love Cam. Cam, there's a real we reason why they love you, dude. Because the way you have carried yourself as a quarterback for this team has been nothing short of spectacular. Obviously, on the field, you're a baller. But this entire season, off the field, going through everything you're going through, while supporting Bryson and everything, you're a good dude, Cam. Okay, you're a great Pat. dude, Appreciate pal. That. Thank you. Hell yeah. Thank you. You've handled it all very yeah. well, bro. Love the youth, man. So I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make sure they go out and win. Okay, yep. so let's talk about this season. Because I remember for game day, first week we are in Charlotte. I believe it was week zero. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about, are you going to play? Are you not going to play? And then the next week, same thing. Then the next week, same thing. At this point, it feels like that would have been completely psychotic if you would have played in week zero, week one. Where are you with the knee rehab? And was that a thing you were going to play this season? Or how did it all kind of unfold? Yeah, I mean, pretty much ever since the right after the uh, preseason, really right before conference play, um, I was kind of just focused on making sure getting the rehab and everything. And then after that kind of was just making sure I was ready to go. But yeah, I just wasn't really able to get where I needed to go. And I think kind of just 
trying to go out there and practice everything kind of just set me back a little bit. How's this season been for you mentally watching the team obviously do what it's doing right now, but also for you while you're rehabbing, getting back to full strength and being a teammate as opposed to being the guy leading the team? Um, it's different. Um, it feels like kind of like a coach in a sense, so just got to make sure that I'm out there doing everything, watching all the film, just any little tidbit of information that I can give Bryson to make a difference is, is really my focus right now. The hair looks amazing. Appreciate that. AJ has a question for you. Have you, uh, have you seen anything or like seeing the game kind of from this position? Obviously, you've never done. It feels like a coach probably. Have you, have you noticed little things that you, you're excited to get back on the field eventually and try to, try to take advantage of? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you get to see pressures and stuff, how they come differently and how, how different quarterbacks handle it in those situations, especially seeing Nate and Bryce in this season. And yeah, I just think, think having that and, and using that knowledge will make me better in, in those type of situations just to make sure we know where we're getting the ball out. And, and, and yeah, hopefully I'll be able to use that next season. Steve. Cam, how, how have you been able to handle the mental health part of, of yeah. really playing, not playing, then being asked every single day, walking on campus, obviously going to class, and everybody has the same question that pretty much they think is the first time they're ever – <laughs> he goes to class. <laughs> no, yeah, of course he does. Of course yeah, he does. Yeah, of course. You know, where the first person asking you, they believe that they're the only person asking you, but that's like the tenth time of the day. Yeah, um, just kind of, you got to roll with it. Um, yeah. Everybody's going to ask and everybody wants to know, but I, in, in reality, I didn't really know, so it was hard to, to kind of go through that situation. But um, yeah, I really relied on my family to make sure to just be my support system, my girlfriend as well. So it was. It was great, and just that, that's how I was kind of just able to stay positive and really just stay with the team. What is your life like here on this camp? This is beautiful. Oh, Gorgeous. Yeah, is. I mean, I this, this is place. bananas. Yeah, the Valley's special, and it, you can just hear them. They're, they're a great group. Yeah, what is life like here, though? It's awesome. I love it. Um, get to go everywhere, and, and chances are people are going to know me, so it's fun, and, and just get to really enjoy everything. That hair is probably yeah. like yes, sir. pretty recognizable. It's flowing. It's absolutely oh, flowing. Yeah. Speaking of flowing hair, go ahead, Con. Yeah, something to think about. Maybe just do a mullet. You know, <laughs> I, I know you got great luscious locks right there, but a mullet really will bring that whole thing together. I mean, there are a lot of clowns out there that are great people, but they got mullets, and they're unbelievable. Yeah, but, shirtless <laughs> one just caught that yeah, ball. Yeah, exactly. Chunks from the Goonies. Uh, <laughs> Cam, Jeez. what do you do kind of in your free time? When you, when you have some time to yourself, when you can, just kind of like relax, unwind. What are you doing? You're playing video games? We're watching shows. Um, uh, there's yeah. one thing that's being yelled, and I'm not going to bring that up, but what, what, what do you do? <laughs> the, uh, the soaking thing. I actually yeah, wanted yeah. to mention the, that. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, soaking is... Um, What's that? Isn't really a Utah thing. It, 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 it at this university. It's oh, more of a down south type of thing. Oh, you're saying they do it down there in Provo. <laughs> down yeah. so we're we, quaking. We don't our, do that. We're earthquaking ourselves yeah. around yeah. here. Oh yeah. yeah. We 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 <laughs> handle things. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good luck. Good boy. Good boy. Good luck. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Good luck, B- uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Where, that's where we're here. Hey, the BYU here. thing is real now. Yeah, <laughs> that, is. Sorry, that was the most passionate Sounds one. Like, yeah, yeah. That was certainly the most passionate one. Um, so this environment, obviously, 80 straight sellouts, we talked about it a bunch because that is not being talked about anywhere, and it should be talked about with this student section. That helmet is sick. They're actually honoring the student section on yep. the helmet. Yeah. It, but it's, it's turn that the side there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. It's special. Yeah, this is one of the best student sections in the nation, and they deserve this. And, and yeah, our hand-painted helmets are always awesome, and they did a really great job with this one. Okay, so let's talk about Oregon tomorrow. I mean, this is a big game for yeah. the team. And obviously, you're not going to be in the game. But what do you tell the team about games like this? You've obviously played in big ones. You've won in big ones. We're talking about back to off championships, Woo! you know, in Utah. Yes, sir. What do you tell the boys about the vibe of what tomorrow's going to be like here on campus with Oregon in town? Um, we don't lose at home. That, that's really the one thing that we, we do. Uh, you you got to go out there and do everything you can. And, and that's what we're going to go plan on doing tomorrow. I love that. Tone has a question for you, Cam. Yeah, Cam, um, I don't know if it's been announced or anything yet. Obviously, you're not playing this year, so it's potentially a redshirt year then. Does that mean you're going to come back and lead the Utes to their first Big 12 championship next year? <laughs> Uh, everything is on the table right now, but I'm, I'm more so focused on this okay. season, making sure we win. Great answer. Okay, smart. That's, smart. That's smart. That's yeah. smart. That's boy. smart. That's smart. On table. Never know. It's on the table. <laughs> you don't know what the future looks like. All right. Just wanted you to feel that because yep. I think they wanted you to feel that. Sure. You've been. All right. Love that. Hell yeah. 
Yeah. Sounds like it's a presidential election. <laughs> yeah. That's a, it's, I mean, only, Not only one instead of four, but I do appreciate the fact that you've handled this whole thing with class. I appreciate that you made time for us today. What's your rest of your day look like right here? Um, I'm going to just go, go relax and get some, get some PT, and, and then we got to practice and get ready to go. What are you doing at practice? Um, right now, just watching for the most part. Just, yeah, trying to coach a little bit here and there. I saw you throw to the shirtless, mulleted kid yeah. back here. I still got it a little bit. You still spinning it a little oh, yeah. bit? It's still there. All right. Well, so thank you for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Thank you for being a nice inspiration to people mm -hmm. that even when it doesn't go your way, you can be an incredible teammate, and you should. Yes, Ladies sir. and gentlemen, Appreciate it. Cam Rising. Yeah. Appreciate you, Ken. Got the Travis Scott's on too. Great shoes. Clean. Very clean. Hair is fantastic. Great hair. Great. Wow. Ty, I apologize for you not being able to ask him a question, but I will say, when we asked him about next year, great question, Tone. Tried to get it. Hey, it's on a table. Come back, Utah. It is. Go, it's on a table. Here we go. With NIL right now, though, this is one of those things. Like Michael Penix Jr. back in, at Washington, great player. There's a chance that that happens because NIL, because you are able to earn a little bit of money. And I'm not saying that, you know, we're going to expect you to go into your pockets to keep Cam Rising, but this NIL thing is a real game changer when some guys are thinking about leaving or maybe making some money and staying in college. It has changed the game completely, Steve. It has changed the game. Um, Do you love it or hate it? It, oh. de it depends on what school. It depends on, <laughs> it depends on what the about school. Here? Utah. I, I mean, I think... Um, it's a, it's a hard question. It's a hard answer because I'm I'm on the uh, I'm on the board here. Oh. <laughs> Are you part of bringing that NIL money in? I know every I'm on the board. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> so so th there's a lot of conversations about the NIL. It's made it the NIL and the transfer portal has made it extremely difficult, and it's made it interesting. Heck, that's how we got Cam. That's how we got some other players in the transfer portal transferring. But at some point, uh, the market has to re reset in themselves because NIL money is getting a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, I would say that. But if you can get five million bucks, kids, go get it. You know what I mean? I, I, go I, get it I love it. No, I agree. We all yeah. agree with or that. Or a bunch of Ram trucks. Yeah. 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 Or a couple. Yeah. Oh, Utah yeah. with the trucks. I know. Genius. That was Sweet. awesome. Genius. Yes. That's a smart idea because even the people that aren't on a scholarship are getting these free trucks and it's leased for a year. Like if you get a company, a local car dealership, uh -huh. it's like that's an easy deal to kind of piece together. Ken Garf. Whittingham. What's the name? Okay. Ken Garf. Ken Garf? Yeah. Shout Ken, out Ken Garf. Garf. Thank you, Kenny. Love you, Ken. It's, it's just on the stadium. The, oh, it's Ken Garf Stadium? He's a car dealer or he's a... I, I, he's Googled. He, he did it. You Googled. Yeah, you, you tell me. Know. That's why you got you here. Yeah. yeah. So Ken Garf is big money in town here? Oh, man. Echoes. It, uh, it's it's ton of folks, man. Utah, listen. Utah uh, scholarship, the athletics, the uh, NIL, the, the, the support for the University of Utah here in Utah, it's unbelievable. Man. You got your name on a couple buildings here, too. Right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Hell yeah. Everybody loves this place. All right, let's talk a little NFL here with Steve. Okay. As you have joined us so graciously, we appreciate you. Also, I think we can make the big announcement. What? Yeah. I what announcement? Do... Celebrity guest picker tomorrow on College Day. Hey. Hey. Come on. Come on, Steve. That's going to be awesome. Yes. I got so excited whenever yeah. I heard about that. So we, Obviously, we've had incredible guest pickers all season. But with you coming on, I have a feeling you're going to go clean slate. I think you're picking perfect Ooh, tomorrow really? on the whole board. Yeah, with that big brain in this great state. <laughs> Hell yeah, Steve. I think you're going perfect tomorrow. I think it's a historic day he just in Utah me. tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to do that. Nah. But we, uh, we're excited and thankful for your hospitality and also for being so gracious with your time today. Fl flew in early to join us. Good man. Good man. Thank Good you. man. Appreciate you, man. So let's talk. Yeah, appreciate you. So let's talk about some NFL news. Jalen Ramsey, there's been video of him getting back to the practice field down there in Miami. Yeah. And Miami's defense has been the thing that isn't really the one garnering the headlines. It's the offense. Now, can you win a championship without a championship defense? Everybody says no. Jalen Ramsey would make that defense infinitely better. Do you agree with that? And then also, do you appreciate the fact that Jalen Ramsey saw Schefter's tweet that said, you know, there's a good chance he's going to be playing this weekend. And Jalen goes, this is news to me, Shefty. <laughs> it kind of dunks on him a little bit yeah. with that entire thing. How do you 
feel about the Jalen Ramsey acquisition to Miami? And how do you feel about him as a player? And if he comes back, what's he going to be like, you think, in the Miami defense? In that defense, they're missing him. And they, they've built that with Vic Vangio. They've built uh, that defense uh, around the type of players like Jalen Ramsey. And I believe when Jalen Ramsey comes in, he's going to be that missing link that they really need. As a player, man, he's a heck of a player. He makes his presence known on the field, a willing tackler, uh, can diagnose and also um, identify alignment and assignment and what those responsibilities are, and he's Super Bowl champ. Yeah, and he's anybody that's been able to win a championship, do your thing. Didn't work at Jacksonville. L.A. didn't hear like it didn't work, right? No, not, not at all. Great. That kind of ended out of nowhere, didn't it? I think, I think the L.A. Rams last year with OBJ – uh, with Von Miller, all those guys, they, they've started to kind of sell off just because of the salary cap yeah. uh, restrictions and, and being over the salary cap. So yeah. it, was, it was part of the process. So I think there are some people on the internet, though, that are like, who cares? Jalen's coming back to Miami. It doesn't care. work. It's like, yo, yeah, it worked in L.A. Yeah. It worked in L.A. Yeah. It, was not a, it was not a bad thing at all. Ty, how do you feel about him dunking on Shefty and that? And do we think, we've seen some of these situations happen in the past where – our friend Rap Sheet, former friend of the program, still friend of ours personally. Right. Okay, he, he hosts a live show. I hope you go watch it on <laughs> NFL Plus. He's phenomenal at what he does. He's broke some news. Players disagreed, and then it turned out Rap was actually inevitably right like yeah. two or three months yeah. later. J.K. Yeah. Dobbins. Yeah, yeah, player was wrong. In this particular situation, I would assume Shefty feels like he's very confident in his news. Jalen Ramsey obviously says, wait a second, I'm still part of this conversation. How do you feel about how he handled it, Ty? I absolutely love when guys dunk on the insiders. <laughs> I just do. You know, I mean, they have all the information. They, they always think they're right. And a lot of times they are right, but I love when these players are like, hey, listen, I don't want things too chummy around here, okay? This guy thinks he knows everything that's going on with my playing career, with my personal life. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of serve him a plate full of shit real quick and, and maybe just let him think real quick, like, okay, maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe I need to go back and check my sources and see if this is correct. And then when inevitably he does come back, I don't know if it'll be this weekend, but when he does come back, Schefter can, you know, take a little victory dance and say he was right, and, and Jalen can say, yeah, you were right, but, you you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to give anyone a competitive advantage. I can't let people know that I'm coming back sooner. I want this to be a, a big hole blue when I come back. I don't need you breaking it two weeks early. I love it. Shefty told us. Yep that Jalen likes breaking his own news. Mm -hmm. that is, that is, he, on the show on Monday, Shefty was like, that one's real tight to the vest over there. Jalen likes controlling his own narrative, his own story. And then here we are just a few days later, and it. Shefty's like, I do believe Jalen's coming back. Yeah. And Jalen's like, you shut the hell up whatever you're talking about me. I love it all. And Jalen said he knows he has a job to do and everything like that. Can't help but notice, I don't know if you saw this, WVU alumni. That's the Harvard of West Virginia right there. That person oh, graduated. Utah wow. chapter? Utah chapter. Look at you that. know you got greatness out here in Utah, pal? Do you know that, Steve? No, I didn't. I, I did. You asked me a question, I answered. <laughs> I did. It's true. I'm sorry. Uh, whenever you talk about greatest wide receivers in the game right now, I assume Tyreek Hill has to be at the top of your Man, list. Man, Ty Tyreek Hill is baller. Has okay. anyone done that? Anyone go as horizontal and vertical with, with as much speed and like suddenness as Tyreek? Usually it's no. like, hey, you're, he just has it all, I feel like. He does. He has it all. And then with Mike McDaniels, the way he has drawn up plays for these guys, he, he uses most in, what, 86% of the time. Mm -hmm. But what's really interesting, and I was actually watching that film, like I was watching like 30 or 40 plays that look the same, but I was trying to figure out, I, like, I was missing something. And it's really as they expand and they make the defense commit. And how they expand is with motion. How they make them commit was, is with the RPO game. Mm. And it's, it's crazy. How do you defend it? Like, how do you, yeah. yeah, how do you defend that, honestly? I mean, you play Hope defense, you tell day. me. I don't know. Yeah, you tell us. <laughs> the, RPO yeah. Game, the RPO game throws everything off, I feel yeah. like, because you can't, you can't play super downhill if you're like a, a linebacker or safety, and you can't, you just can't commit either way. You're kind of in between every play, and that's what I don't know. I, I'm glad I'm not a defender anymore. Tyreek Hill uh, was actually maybe not playing this weekend because of a hip. He's had a couple cramps allegedly. We yeah. assume mm -hmm. it's hot in Florida too, though. Yeah, it is hot in Florida, Very but Tyreek Hill, for how explosive he is and what like 0.01% body fat that he has, he's very durable. 
Very. I think that's what he has. Yeah, you didn't yeah. know that? Have you seen his hamstrings? I, I don't look Vascularity on the hamstrings, yeah. bro. The through neck. the pants. <laughs> Who's next? Are looking at his hamstring through the pants? Well, whenever he's chucking up the deuce, <laughs> yeah. it's hard not to down in yeah. Miami. He's it's got a dump truck. But he uh, came Super out to speak right about there, huh? <laughs> That's all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's all day, every day. Uh, Tyreek Hill came out and spoke about the injuries and whether or not he's playing. Is there much pain? Do you have an injury or are you fine for Sunday? Nah, I just wanted some attention, man, because my mom went talk to me yesterday, so I needed some attention from somebody. Nah, I'm good, though. Good. You plan on playing, playing on Sunday? Sunday? Yeah, baby, I'm good, baby. Okay, so what do you hear whenever you hear that, Steve? That's a guy who uh, is sick of people talking about him potentially being injured. He is not known to ever get hurt. I appreciate the fact of the way you said, you know, my mom wouldn't talk to me. I just need a little attention. It's certainly a lot of attention when the best wide receiver in football is potentially out and that never happens. I love Tyreek Hill. I think everything he does is sweet. And this team's much different without him. Yeah. How do you feel about the whole conversation around his hip, though? You think it's real or do you think his answer tells us it's not at all? I think it's it's real, he, he, obviously, because it's on the injury report, so it has to be real, right? But you, he's a competitor, and he has a he has a goal of trying to get those two thousand yards. So he knows every game that he doesn't play, it, that means he has to do double duty to get back on track. And so I think he's looking at it um, like. He wants to get that 2,000 yards, and when you set that goal and you make that statement earlier in the year and you're now on pace to get it, man, you're going to have to kill him before he not gets on the field. <laughs> Connor has a question for you. It feels like that thought isn't, you know, kind of everybody in the NFL. You know, some guys that aren't 100%, even if they're just a little banged up, they don't want to go. Have you ever kind of had those situations where you know who you are, how you play, and at 100%, basically no one can stop you, but when you're at 80 and you know your team needs you, like, was that something that you think about while you're playing in the game like Tyreek might be well, this week? Pain tolerance varies, right? Um, it, it does vary, and I think AJ can say this better, is you know – there's certain pains based on your positions that you can maneuver through, and there's some that you can't. And, speak on this more, depending on the team, sometimes being hurt is almost like punishment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No question. Because if you want to get hurt during camp, don't do that. They'll make you come in at 4 a.m., get treatment, do all that <laughs> stuff. And some guys want to keep you out of the training room and do everything they possibly can to make – the, the rehab as miserable as possible, and the coaches will look at you like it, it's just not a good thing. Can't make the club in the tub, as the old saying goes. But do you think guys are going? Like, do you think sometimes what I had an issue with every once in a while, if a teammate was like, ah, "I just don't feel right," just I, yeah, I just don't feel right. I'm not going to go today. I'm like, what does that mean? You don't feel right, real? Nobody all, feels. We right. all feel terrible, obviously, but like we're going to play a game. I'm hungover. That guy's hurt. <laughs> yeah, like, Come so on. You, know like, I mean? you ever see that? Nobody Steve, feels you ever see good. That someone just feels like, ah, yeah, yeah, I just don't feel. I feel like I might pop a hammy if I go today. Like I'm not hurt, but I'm uh, worried I might get hurt. I kind of use that verbiage when I didn't want to practice. That's practice. That's okay. a different, different thing. I, I use that verbiage because legally, I used to be a player rep too. So legally, I'm not refusing to practice. Yeah. Legally. So they owe me just, my guarantee. You did your, you did your homework. Hey, uh -huh. Just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Hey. That's code for I ain't going. <laughs> ladies and right. ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap up this hour two on ESPN Live from Utah, we'd like to let you all know that. It's not going to be possible to buy a ticket to this particular game. Nope. Nuh -uh. But I do believe there's like 12 out of the 13 Big Ten schools that tickets are available readily <laughs> yeah. for mm -hmm. you to purchase at any time on both sidelines <laughs> at about the 40 That's right. with perfect eyesight on anything. And if you were going to buy a ticket to any football game or live event, there's only one place you go to. And that's our friends right here at SeatGeek. Hell yeah. yeah. Shout out to SeatGeek being our first ever partner and also the first people whenever we went to ESPN saying, yep. what do we got to pay to remain with the program? We want to be on the ticker. We want to be in your world. In SeatGeek, we want to let you know we're incredibly grateful for you. Hell yeah, SeatGeek. Yeah. Thank you, SeatGeek. SeatGeek right now has over 28 million downloads, and they're still the number one rated ticketing app. Whoa. They have tickets to every single event happening on Earth, and right next to it, there's a red dot. If there's a red dot, that means this ticket 
is crop. Mm -hmm. This is trash. You can find a ticket at a better price somewhere else. If there's a green dot next to it, though, this is the best ticket on the internet mm -hmm. that you could possibly get for this particular event. They're not going to lie to you. No. They're never going to catfish you. No. And SeatGeek will always be there for you. And right now, if you use the code PAT30, you'll get $30 off any football tickets. That's any NFL what? or college football what? purchase. Doesn't matter if you're a new or repeat purchaser. Use code PAT30 whenever you're buying from our friends at SeatGeek. And shout out to SeatGeek, bro. You guys are the greatest. We appreciate you. Thanks for being a friend of the football community. And thank you for being a friend to us. And thank you to all of you for watching along at home, in a bar, what? at a restaurant, what? at work, what? in school, what? while we did our thing live from this glorious campus here in Utah. You need to make your way out here if you ever get a chance. It's beautiful. We continue on YouTube. Have an incredible weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Nailed it. Great work. Oh, here we go. Nice. Nice. We're on YouTube still. It's coming. Oh, well, we started this last yeah, week. Yeah, that didn't yeah. slow you guys down. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know. I don't know how many. Okay, yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know how many of those snuck past the goalie <laughs> when we're on ESPN. Hey, but great enthusiasm yeah. out there. Yeah. That was amazing. We appreciate the hell out of you, Steve Smith. Uh, oh. I think break or not? Jeez. Oh, hockey boards. Here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. Um, in the next hour, Steve, before you throw that back, Coach Whittingham will be here next hour. Yeah. yeah. Dalton Kincaid will be here. Steve Smith will still be here. We're going to go to the bathroom, okay? And when we come back, greatest hour in the history of sports entertainment. Woo! We appreciate you all so much. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five! Bye. Bye. What's isolation? It's four nights of uh, complete uh, darkness. What? Is there a bathroom or you wearing a diaper? You For real. real. Holy shit! Close well, so the thing that really takes it over the top. Jesus fucking Christ. The thing that really takes it over the top. <laughs> of a bitch, Mad Mel. Get it together. <laughs> <laughs>
I smoked meat very well. Uh, <laughs> Ask Schefter what I texted him when he somehow got my number and texted me. I didn't respond to Diana Rossini, I think her name is. I would say the same thing that I told Chef. Lose my number. Nice try. My dad always said this. He said, boys, that's for show. Yeah. That's for dough. Yeah. He said, that one makes a girl's dream, but that one puts, a, puts food on the table. Yeah. That's the work muscle. Okay. We're saying you look like the Wayans brothers with the white chicks. Oh, <laughs> no. I'd say it was like a specific person. It's just like, hey, this is a sweet mask that someone spent a lot of time on, I guess. And they had a lot of old man. And I love deeper. And I... AJ Hawk. Yeah. Oh, Whoa. Okay, Ooh. here we go. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I'm trying to figure this whole situation out. Okay, we got to zoom here. Yeah, well, congrats, we're on ESPN. Awesome, my camera on my floor. Smoke sweeter and now. Yay, forgiveness, I've been denied. That's Live Like You Were Dying. That's that song. Good song. That's how he wrote it, probably. <laughs> There is a crowd of about 30 people moving through the back end of the business field here. And in the middle of it is this black Samoan man who has become the most famous human on earth. Great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the GOAT, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. There's thousands. of people skipping class to come see your big ass. Listen, there is thousands and thousands of you skipping class. It doesn't matter if they go to class. Moana is one of the best animated films of all time. What? Okay, can't, can't wait for the live action. Thank you, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. We talk about Moana. What can I say except you're, you're welcome. welcome. And we talk about Mana. Honestly, listen, kid, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. Yeah. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was my way just messing around. I could not even bury its guts, sprouted the tree. Now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What does it take away? Don't mess with my way when he's on a breakaway. Oh. And the temperature here on my skin oh. is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been to make everything happen. Look at the me, 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 my way just tick it, tick tapping. That's it. On the Samoan side, Polynesian side, we have a word called mana. Mana is spirit, mana is power, mana comes from in here. It's the thing that gives you goosebumps, it's that thing you feel, it's that thing when I walked out and we felt this thing, this yeah. is mana. Yeah. This mana. is mana. mana. It, it's very, very, very real and you could feel it. Mwah. Little things like I don't get driven anywhere, I don't want to get driven anywhere, I don't like chauffeurs. Keeps me in my way, just a little grounded, like yes. I could drive myself everywhere and not telling some guy, hey, take me here, or take me there. That is something I'm going to start saying like, yeah, because when they open you your door, you feel so bad. I can open my own door, dude. They're trying to be courteous, it's their job. But also, the day I stop opening my own door is the day I become a big old bitch. Here we go. That's a big cup. Oh. Oh. Here's the iconic sound, you guys know it. Oh. The special Terra Monitos goes out to Passion. Congratulations on your show. Very proud of you, very proud of all you boys. And to all of you, yeah. love you guys. Thank you for the support. Keep kicking ass. Cheers. In my world, when I sit down and we're talking about movies and all this other shit, it's never this. It's never this, this, back with the boys, and you. So, I appreciate it, and this one's to you. Thank this you, boys. To you, pal. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. All right, we're going to take five-minute break here. Oh, hold on, one more. If you smell what The Rock is cooking.
Stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay. Damn it! Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Don't chant that, Jesus. (laughs) Welcome back to beautiful Utah. On this Feel Good Friday, October 27, 2023, hour three of the program starts now. Football is happening all around you. Steve Smith Sr., A.J. Hawk, Tone Diggs, Ty Schmidt, and the legend that is Boston Conner. No, 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 no. All right, we have Coach Kyle Whittingham joining us in about 25 minutes or so. Dalton Kincaid will be joining us. Hell and yeah. This is going to be a beautiful celebration of Utah football, Pac-12 football, you name it, everything yep. like that. And Steve, I don't think we've gotten a chance to chat you, uh, uh, chat with you about this. And whenever you were playing here, it was a different conference and obviously a new one's happening. But like, the Pac-12 is going out. I know. Maybe the best that it's been in a long, long, long time. <laughs> ever. Yeah. And you guys are the reigning whoa, whoa. champs of it. And then uh, ever. They're ever. saying ever. That's what people are saying, Steve. Again. They're saying best <laughs> ever. Last year of it, though. Wild scene. How do you feel about the transition era that currently is happening with college ball? Right before the season, I was in panic mode as well when things were starting to fall apart and, and people were trying to figure out where to go, how, they, how they're going to go. But I think, obviously, Coach Prime has done a fantastic job in Colorado expanding that. You can boil all you want, but expanding. That. And then that just gives us an opportunity, Thanksgiving weekend, to go down to Boulder and go ahead and, and show why we're pretty good here in Utah. It's been a lot of that. A lot of cities. I think they won two games. So. <laughs> last year. <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah, I think they were terrible last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they kind of did their thing. But I can understand how teams like Utah and like Oregon mm-hmm. and like Washington – feel as if they're the ones that should be chatted about and yep. coach yeah, Prime should be should be but they are yeah, you know what I mean like coach Prime coming in and building the buzz around a Colorado Buffalo program in college football not only smart but good for college football as a whole this has been one of the best college football years in a now granted yeah. we've been very lucky just to get dropped into the middle of it and baptized yeah. by incredible college football fan bases yeah. around the country but Tone, this year, not just Pac-12, it's been an incredible college football year as a whole. It's been the most uh, wide open year, I think, in a, in a long time. Like for a long time, it was always Bama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson. You could write that in and, and that's what it was and it became on, not exciting. But now everyone is in. There's a ton of one loss teams who are in, including Utah, especially with a big win tomorrow. Like the whole season is still in front of us. Yeah. I don't know what they got a pop there. I think it was just somebody holding up a U out here. You know what I mean? But there's college football playoff implications tomorrow against Oregon here in the Pac-12. And there's another team that still thinks that they're getting a college football playoff spot. There's two Pac-12 teams that still have a very – three Pac-12 yeah. teams uh, no, that still have a very – Yeah, three. Yeah, uh, three. What about Oregon? Oregon has a chance. Yeah, Oregon, Utah. Washington. 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 Yeah. Not USC. No, no, not USC. no, no, no. Washington. I, I think Oregon State sneaky. Yeah, tough squad. DJ. Tough squad. Always going to be. It's going to fuck everybody here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. I, mean, I, I, like I love the bunker mentality of this place. It yeah. is awesome. That was the most ever on the ESPN broadcast, I think. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's no way that they were able to drown out the BYU one. No way. That was a passionate. That's, yeah, that's the rivalry. So that's real. That's a real thing, oh, yeah. right, Steve? Hey, you guys don't like BYU. They don't like hey, you. Listen, when I'm, when I'm doing analyst work, oh, boy. Fred Warner, yeah. 
Bro, I've like gritted my teeth giving him a compliment. Yeah. Just watching him. He's a fantastic player. We went to BYU. Yeah, I, I mean, I got a buddy. Yeah, Brady Pepinga, BYU. He won't wear anything red ever. And he, he hates should. red. Yeah. So, he's, yeah, it's like, I respect that kind of rivalry. He should I really not do. He, he doesn't even deserve to wear that color. <laughs> There's a sign over there that says BYU still sucks over there. I mean, that is. Well, Ian. They gave us, they said, hey, that soaking thing doesn't happen around here. They said, this isn't one of those A little more lenient here. Says that. Hey, the, ho the, holy war is real right the, the holy war is real serious. The yeah. holy war is cool. saying some not so holy words. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. I appreciate it. But I thought about those ESPN executives like 20 times. Just like, mm -hmm. what are those kids saying? What are we? What are they saying? Those Utah. Boys and girls aren't saying they would. No, not the Mormons. Those not are those good. Utah. Those are good boys no, and girls. Not those Utah people. They're, no. they're not saying what we think they're saying, are they? It's like, yep, that school, yeah. that school, mm -hmm. that school, those people. Wow. I did see some Latter day Saints out here, though, with some uh, helmets on. Yeah, there it is. Hell yeah. Made a shot for the guy on the right. The guy on the left said he sold me weed. That did not happen in Utah, okay? Never. <laughs> for the good of both of us, I have read the laws around here. That's a. That's a that's punishable that's jail. by jail. That's yeah. jail time. You're going to jail potentially out here. And Death sometimes. What, Steve? You don't believe that that Latter-day Saints You're boy right. sold me weed? <laughs> I'm not getting into that. Okay. <laughs> on the board, on the board. Uh, we talked to Alex Smith earlier, Steve Smith. Uh, we talked to Alex Smith earlier, Steve Smith, senior. Did you think about going one, the first, instead of senior, whenever you were deciding that whole thing? Like, Steve Smith, the first, and then, like, Steve Smith, Deuce, yeah, mm -hmm. or the second. How did we get senior, junior? How did we decide that? Just so I know, if I ever have a baby boy, if I ever have a baby boy. Well, one of my good friends, Alan Beck, who he's the third, and when uh, we were well, trip, pretty sweet. That yeah. is sick. Yeah, <laughs> there was a fourth playing football right now. Yeah. But, <laughs> but some credit got confused. Oh, really? Excuse me? With, with him. And so for me, you know, having a junior was really So it wasn't his kid? This is a Maury Povich situation? Wow. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't it was, third. So Alan Beck is my good friend. He's Alan Beck the third. Alan Beck the second, his dad, they got some, uh, some credit confused. And so I was like, you know what? It's taken me a long time. Uh, with this credit that I've built up. Yep. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, his name is, is, is Steve Smith Jr. And mine is Steve Smith Sr. My ID says Steve Smith Sr. His birth certificate says Steve Smith Jr. So there's, there's, there's a distinct difference between us. <laughs> oh, that's like birth name, yes, senior. Yes. Birth yeah, name, like junior. Like if I give you my, well, I don't have my ID, but it says. Well, you don't need it here. There's no drugs. I know but, that. Yep. There's no alcohol well, out but here. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's not, it's not. <laughs> Like, it's not like, oh, I just did it because it was cute, you know? Was, so let's say Steve Smith Jr. Yeah. has a baby boy. Yeah. A sweet, a sweet, sweet little baby boy. Yeah. Future Utah you boy. So is that Steve Smith Jr. Jr.? Or is there a chance that Steve Smith the third? That's a great question. You, call you should him talk Trey, to your boy about yeah. yeah. Call him Trip. Trips. Uh, you gotta ask okay. I don't know too many black trips. No, I know either. a white trip. He's currently in Saudi Arabia right now training Francis and gone. Good luck, trip. Good yeah. luck. Nice. Go Good get luck, trip. trip. Pulling for I, you. I don't know how that one's going to go. Have you ever boxed? Feels like that's something you could do. I, like celebrity boxing? Would you ever get into that? I don't do celebrity boxing. Why not? I don't. Man, I'm, I'm trying to just live my life, bro. I, don't know. <laughs> I, bo I box, but I'm not doing celebrity boxing. What if the money was right? No. Okay. Huh. Why? Because that would potentially turn you into the person you're no longer. No, I just don't want to buy. I do not want to get hit in my face for entertainment. <laughs> okay. Okay. I get Me it. Smart. Either, bro. That's really it. smart. Anyways, Oculus. Alex Smith. You. Alex Smith was on earlier. Alex Smith. Period. Right. Yeah. Maybe. I don't was know. on earlier. We don't know. And he was talking about Matt. We don't know if he's a yeah. senior. Yeah. yeah maybe the first. No idea of what's junior. coming. Who knows what's coming up? Anyways, he was talking about Matt Canada's offense in Pittsburgh mm. and about how there was a lack of creativity and there was really nothing going on. And he got his name. This guy got. Called to be fired in U this is Utah. Hmm. He's the offense coordinator in Pittsburgh. Yeah. That's 
a full actual country of Canada yeah. Yeah. apart, okay? Yeah. This is a long way chanting for this guy to get fired. But Alex Smith brought up about how there's a lack of creativity, emotions, and he talked about Miami. How come every team doesn't do all the standard things that great offenses do? And why do you think in 2023 it's evolved so much to the point where it is right now? Well, one of the reasons why is, is, is the fundamental base of it, where it comes from. It comes from... Uh, Mike Shanahan, Gary Kubiak, Kyle Shanahan, and then all the guys be underneath it. Minnesota runs it. Kevin O'Connell, he was with the Washington Commanders. And then Sean McVay was a tight end coach with Washington Commanders. Mike uh, McDaniels was the receivers coach in Houston when Gary Kubiak was running it. He was assistant wide receivers coach too. Kyle Shanahan. Okay. Uh, Shane Waldrick is the offense coordinator in Seattle. He was with... Uh, Houston Texans. So a lot of 75% of this offense currently right now is under the Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan slash Gary Kubiak tree. And so a lot of teams are running the same thing. But average of motion right now is roughly about 55%. But you also have to have the players and the personnel and the personality to be able to do that. You just don't do it because someone else can do it. You got to have the right players and not every team has it. And so each team is uniquely made by the creativity or they lack the creativity of their team and uh, their coordinators. Well, the coordinator in Pittsburgh is not being celebrated anywhere in the country. No. Know, probably international as well. I assume in Italy with how many Italians are in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. they're chanting whatever fire is in an Italian. Yep. And in the country of Canada, everybody else is thinking Connor's got some. All those teams you just mentioned, like Seattle, Kenneth Walker, Sam Fran, McCaffrey, obviously in Miami, Mostert's, you know, unbelievable. Why do you think that is kind of getting forgotten about the running back and how important they are. And do you think it ever comes back? Because it feels like the wide receivers forever are going to, their contracts are going to keep going. They're going to be valued at a premier position. And yeah. running back, even though you need them in every successful offense, you need a good running back. Yeah. But they're not valued anymore where, where they were. Do you think it comes back because the NFL is cyclical? Or do you yes. kind of see that go, oh, okay. No, I, th I think it'll come back. It just depends on who's at the helm, right? You get a lot of coaches like the McVay. You got the West Coast. It was um, West Coast used to be it was uh, McCarthy. McCarthy, it was John Gruden, it was Andy Reid, all mm -hmm. of the West Coast, yeah. and that's gone, right? And then it was North Turner, his offense. Now that's gone. Now it's the, the Kyle Shanahan. Now that's here. So it will reset and change. It's just a matter of time. And who is the next guy who people are starting to say, hey, we need that guy. We, we want someone that is a, a clone of him, and that, that's what's going on. Do you remember when Cup of Coffee with McVay meant you were going to be a head coach yep. in the NFL? That yeah. was a real deal there for, like, two off seasons. Yeah. And then Zach Taylor started out terrible, and they kind of pivoted away. Now Zach Taylor is all the way back, I'd assume, with that Bengals team. Uh, what do you expect out of the offense from Utah against this Oregon team? Because I'll tell you what, old Bryson Barnes, 5-0 mm -hmm. oh as a starter for the Utah Utes. <laughs> Had two tugs last week. He was the most he's thrown in a single game. Yep. The guy's not only a game manager, but that offense has some weapons, has the ability to keep up with the defense that's been so dominant. What do you think about the Utah offense? Well, well with Oregon, you know with what they – present offensively and defensively. You want to play keep away football. So run, establishing a run and allowing some of the play action, but also catching some deep passes, but intermediate throws, keep the chains moving, stay ahead of schedule. That's always important. You got it. Big games like this, whoever can manage the game like a NFL quarterback or NFL team has the possibility of coming out. And you've seen that over and over. There are times, especially in college, in college, momentum shifts mm. so quickly. So you got to be able, whoever can play the keep away game the best has the biggest opportunity to, to upset. Especially that Oregon offense. Hey, that Oregon offense is moving like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Oh, yeah. So if you're able to keep them off the field yep. and just kind of wear down that defense a little bit, I think that's going to be your best bet. But don't. Sleep on Dan Lanning's defense, not knowing you're going to do that. That's right. You know what I mean? I mean, the general has told us, and we know what the general says in college football is the standard. And he has said Oregon is one of those teams that can beat you in every single way. Yeah, that's what he said. Not, not yeah. that I'm saying yeah. they will. Go ahead, Tom Dix. Um, we talked about the Steelers just then, and a uh, story this week was George Pickens came out was kind of talking, talking shit on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's how I feel. A lot of that in every campus. We talked about it earlier. Had some words uh, about the Jaguars defense. How do you feel about a young wide receiver coming out and talking early to, with the week of the game? George Pickens is a fantastic wide receiver, and he knows by saying that he's going to put all eyes on him. Yep. So I, I, I believe he knows exactly what he's doing. When he's getting the ball, he's a special kid. Special. He can run some great routes, uh, back shoulder throws, contested catches. Oh. He can run away from me. His oh. releases off the line are pretty, pretty good. Um, really, obviously, is just holding them back. Is is can they establish this run game? They have really this two-headed monster. Yep. But George Pickens also knows that you know he's going to get some some good DBs. Uh, they're going to go after him. It's going to be a physical game. So he's bringing it. He's letting them know that I expect. Is, it's going to be a physical game. Yeah. Well, let's pivot away from the Pittsburgh Steelers and Matt Canada's incredible offense. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're four and two. Top of the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, oh, teams yeah. would love to be four and two. Hey, don't yeah, look I, now. I know Pittsburgh a few teams. Steelers. What's that? I said I know a few teams. Be, yeah. Lovely. Who's that? Who, who are you talking? Just, just talking. So you're talking about the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, we love to be four and two. Mm-hmm. You said we do the Ravens, but obviously your heart's down there in Carolina. I mean, I pay taxes in Carolina. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I've heard your taxes are going to be needed because although you have the second richest owner in the NFL, he will say, uh-uh, we ain't, <laughs> oh, you yeah. ain't, you're paying your fair share. <laughs> exactly. To this entire, before I guess we move on to what I was going to talk about, like let's talk about the Carolina Panthers. What do you think? Frank Reich was fired week nine or week 10 with the Indianapolis Colts after we didn't have a first down against the New England Patriots. And it seemed as if the Frank Reich era with Indianapolis was great. And then we went through a litany of quarterbacks that ended up not being good at football. And for one reason or another, the team just fell apart completely. Yep. Behind the scenes, on the field, yep. you name it, we ended up with the number four overall pick. And Jeff Saturday was a head coach Hell last yeah. year. That's right. Okay, That's where we were yep. with Frank. So then he's the one get, that gets tasked to take over the number one overall pick with Bryce Young. It's not starting out as fantastic as maybe some other places. Yeah. What, but what could you expect? What are you guys thinking in Carolina with Frank Reich and with the Bryce Young starting? And how do you see it going? Well, the fan base is irate. Okay, right? good. So I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Okay. Okay. But the engagement of it, and that just says the expectation that the Carolina Panthers fans have and, and they desire. And Who are they most upset with? Is it I, Frank? I, I, I'm not sure. I don't really – I haven't really told anybody. But it's just, you know, they're, they're upset. Like, we know who the Steelers fans are upset about. Who? You know, there's, who are the directed. Steelers fans upset We know that. I just wonder if it's like, oh, the owner, head coach, players, oh, it's, court, it's, you know. It's a laundry list of people. Yeah. Right? I, I've been accused of uh, being a homer and because – think about this. Okay. I'm the, right now in Carolina, I've been kind of the voice of – Reason, which is shocking. No, it's new Steve. Yeah, I, let's I, go, Steve. I don't, I don't know how that feels. I, sometimes I'm like, why are they setting me up? <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, it's a rookie quarterback. We got a whole new coaching staff. There's a lot of new things happening. There's a lot of moving moving parts. There's a lot of moving pieces, and they're going to have to figure it out, and that's what the season is going to take. It's going to take – you will know what to expect and a realistic expectation heading into next year, how the rest of the season uh, really – takes a toll. It got loud for Frank and Indy. Yeah. Yeah. It got loud. But he did good things with us. He, he did, did good things good with us. Thing. He no, took he Phil Rivers no, Phil he... Rivers and the Colts to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Phil Rivers. Absolutely. Okay, and Phil Rivers, I wish we still had him at quarterback, <laughs> yeah. is what I'm wishing. Do you? Yeah, but then we have Carson Wentz, then we have the whole saga, then we have the whole situation with Matt Ryan, and then now, I mean, it's just like, we've been through a lot, yeah. and Frank Reich has been through a lot. I hope it works out for you guys in Carolina with him. Go ahead, Ty. Well, and the Panthers, like, you know, Frank Reich and the front office have said, like, hey, we got our guy in Bryce Young. Yeah. And um, there was that video of, you know, uh, McCown talking with C.J. Stroud when he went down to his pro day and said, hey, you know. You know, he, talked to, all, there was, he yeah. talked to all of them. Yeah, for sure. But he said, hey, when you get to Carolina, we'll play basketball together. He wasn't saying that to every quarterback that he was talking to. He said that to C.J. Stroud, though. Do you think – in any way, shape, or form that they have any buyer's remorse yeah. that they didn't go with C.J. Stroud instead of Bryce Young? I don't think so. But I also haven't walked around and asked people, hey, do you have buyer's remorse? Why don't you do that? Start polling. Yeah, you Why pay don't we taxes start doing there. That? Yeah. yeah, you pay your taxes. You deserve answers, bro. You're on yeah. the board at Utah. Come on. You know what I mean? You deserve some answers. Big deal. Because we're wondering these things. <laughs> yeah, and we don't live there, so we can't ask. Yeah, what you think? In. I mean, I would like to make a trip down there to the Queen City, I do believe. Yeah, it does. And where you go, know. uptown, not downtown? Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, I know. We I haven't have been there in a while. I haven't got a chance to say, like, hey, C.J. Stroud is phenomenal. Oh, he's doing think, great. Do you think it's a situation, or do you think uh, Bryce Young's going to continue to grow? Do you think Bryce Young's going to be a great pro? I think he's going to be a good. I think he's going to be a good pro in Carolina. Oh. The reason well, I your said, voice get high I, 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 <laughs> because he said great 
and it's five games in. But I he definitely I, has I the think, ability to be great. Be great. Yes. A, a great professional quarterback, you're saying. I, yeah. I'm never going to say one play. Oh, man, that's a great player six games in. I'm not going to say that. All right, let's but, give him hope. Let's not kill yeah, him yet. Yeah. Let's go, Bryce. Sometimes you know, Bryce, though. Bryce, don't protect you. Do you really know. know? Six games? With, with some guys? I mean, I feel like with Jeff, Justin Jefferson, we knew. Sauce Gardner. Like, some guys I feel like you do okay. know. Quarterback, though. Peyton Manning led the NFL in interceptions his Much first year. And, and, and there's a lot. People at Carolina say we're tired of hearing what Peyton Manning, he's not Peyton Manning. I, I, we don't know. Might be. Peyton Manning, much taller, bigger forehead. Yeah. Yep. I don't know his personality. Bryce's personality. Peyton's got a... Yeah. Really good person. Great personality. Great Bryce Young, good personality? Yeah, he's a great dude. How is he at golf? Uh, I don't know. I haven't played. Have a little beer whiskey Why? with the team? You think, you think Bryce Young would have a little beer whiskey? Why? I, I don't know. Well, I'm well, just saying, Peyton Manning, these are all things. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out whether or not <laughs> he's, Peyton he's the next Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> just answer the question, Steve. Steve I'm doing some journalism. Do you even live in Steve, I'm doing some damn huh? journalism. Do you even live there? Yeah, I live Let's there. do some journalism a little bit more here, shall we, before Coach Whittingham joins us on set here. And I assume these people are going to go bananas. You know, Kirk Cousins is a man who gets judged mightily on a regular basis, especially whenever the brightest lights are shining and the most eyes are watching. His team's record's not fantastic mm -mm. under the lights when they're the only no. ones on television. Kirk Cousins was asked about that after a massive win over the San Francisco 49ers on Monday night. Uh, I got a couple answers to that question. So going back to, like, process, like, we played the Chiefs on Monday night in 2017, and we lost on the last-second field goal, and I walked off the field saying... That's as good as I've ever played. So, like, I'm just not going to buy into the narratives because they're just not – that's not true. That's not how I evaluate myself. Yes, we lost in the last second field goal, but, like, I've never played better. So, you can, <laughs> so narratives can be what they are, but I know better. Suck it. Um, and then there's also a little bit of when I got 100 text messages after the game from people I hadn't heard from in – potentially years, <laughs> I'm like, oh, there is a little bit more of a microscope on Monday night maybe than there is on Sunday at noon uh, that uh. You, you sort of see the overreaction the other way too where I'm saying just the same way that in 2017 that wasn't true, this isn't true either. You know, it's somewhere in the middle. And so let's, let's kind of walk it back from, from that response. Kirk Cousins is a beautiful depiction of in football, the quarterback is going to take the blame for everything if it doesn't go their way. I love how Kirk handles it. And also in quarterback and on our program, I think he's mentioned this as well. It's got real loud about him in prime time. Yeah. And I appreciate that he's kind of addressing it head on. Yeah, I think he's kind of almost like not standing up for himself or the same, but hey, I understand how I played. Whatever the score may be, I get it. Like I... I know I don't have to judge my whole career off of what you guys say about me. So I like that. I think whether it's like anything on the outside, whether the, whatever they say about you, good or bad, it shouldn't affect you that much. You should not. Get I don't on, know. Get People have been saying some really coaster. terrible stuff about me, and I've been riding. Well, away. I'm saying, let's say on the football field, though. If you're a football player, the football yeah, yeah, field, great, whatever great. they say, Craft. you know, you can't get on that roller coaster because then that's exhausting. I think so. If you just stay at a steady incline, that's what Kirk seems to be doing. He always, he always kind of takes the high road. We want to. I want to see Kirk step out of the box a little bit, kind of just oh. take a few buttons ice down, up, show son. us his personality oh, yeah. a little bit. Tell somebody to ice up, maybe yeah. afterwards. He's say, wearing hey, the chain. Kirk hey, hey, Brock Purdy, ice up. What if Kirk did <laughs> say that oh, after man. the game? That'd be crazy. Brock kind of needs ice up. That's kind of. Yeah, legit, because there's stats that have come out about Brock Purdy on that Monday Night Football game, by the way. Uh, Pre-concussion, post-concussion. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I went on first take, which is great show. Sure. Great I cannot show. believe I get to go on there. And I said, you know, Brock Purdy kind of, you know, I don't want to say I said it exactly how you said it, but I've said over the last two weeks, Brock Purdy has become like – Pretty normal human, which yeah. we did not expect at all. And then you break down the stats even more. Before concussion, he had a 124.3 passer rating. After the concussion, which has been reported, he's probably going to miss this game, although they said they're still holding on hope this year. And there's been people that have said the, the contrary, but it feels like if a quarterback has a concussion, they're going to be missing the next week. Now, that's just new vibe of how they treat concussions. Let's just assume there's a chance that Brock Purdy's out. Sam Darnold going to be the quarterback. But after the potential concussion shot right to his head, which was on a quarterback shot. dive, 4.2 passer rating where both of his picks happened and he only had 20 pass yards. It's like, oh, that makes a lot more sense yeah. on why Brock Purdy potentially looked that way. But I appreciate that Brock Purdy's being, being Mr. Irrelevant. The last pick is like, I'm not telling anybody that I have a concussion at all. But in this particular case, might have made the team better if he did. Ain't that right, Steve? Real deal. Well, if you have a concussion, you're not capable of telling people you have a concussion. <laughs> hmm. You could say, my, I feel weird maybe, I guess. Right? I've but heard self reporting. processing why you feel weird. I've yeah. had a concussion, didn't know I had a concussion. What'd you feel? What'd you know? They told me. What'd you feel like? I was 
I was in a preseason game. They said they knew something was wrong when everybody said break, and I was still in the huddle. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that'd be a problem. <laughs> that'd be a problem. And I he had was, no idea. <laughs> so I swear to hell, everybody got. I, <laughs> what I don't doing? have a concussion. I know I, that. I also, my wife drove the car home. And yet I still lost the keys <laughs> in the house. Okay, so I've heard stories from teammates, and it's not necessarily a comedic thing. No, but yeah. It is a very real thing. Like what football was five, ten years ago when it comes to concussion, vastly different now. We're all expecting Sam Darnold yeah, yeah. to be the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers this weekend. How do you feel about that pickup? Obviously you know him a little bit yeah. from his time in Carolina. I mean, I've seen Sam in practice with the Jets. I've seen him in Carolina. In practice, he's going to make the right throw. It's just sometimes <laughs> in the game, oh. he doesn't always pull the trigger, right? And Got so it. I just – I think with he's with Kyle Shanahan, who's going to help him get out of that. And we'll find out this weekend why they let Trey Lance go for pretty much anything uh -huh. and kept Sam Darnold as the backup. Yeah, I think um, there was reports – when Sam Donald was signed to the Niners? Yeah, right. This is the greatest football thrower that the San Francisco 49ers have ever signed. Ever. Yes. That's a real deal. That I'm was a 49ers fan. Don't do not do that. That's what they said. Now, I didn't do <laughs> it. No, no, this is NBC Sports San Fran, Matt Maioko. He said. Ma Maioko. 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 Okay. He said it. Okay. So now we get a chance to find out about what everybody has said about this Kyle Shanahan offense where they're like, okay. hey, you drop Mac Jones in this offense, mm -hmm. they'd be able to go. You drop any quarterback yeah, right. in this offense. Like Trey Lance? Well, 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 they always leave that name well, out. Yeah. They, they always leave that name out. Jimmy Garoppolo? Um, ladies and gentlemen, we'll pivot away from concussion talk. And we'll pivot to maybe the man of the last two decades. Mm -hmm. Ladies Gentlemen, I've been told that he is near. We cannot see him, but I can certainly feel him. And that's because we are in the great state of Utah. Ladies and gentlemen, hilarious, rolling in on a Harley right now. An absolute dog of a head coach for Utah. Ladies and gentlemen. Street glide myself, Coach Kyle Whittingham. Yeah. Oh my God, that was awesome. That's a beautiful bike, dog. Oh. What a hilarious thing. Zito just said uh, right before it started. He said, "Coach Witt is here," and I said, uh, "He's not on stage. Here. You'll hear." Him. We sure did. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know how many CCs this thing's got under it, but a bunch of ponies just pulled in here with some, uh, you can say right there, Steve. Ah, uh, but you can pass on over. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go with it. Yeah, you'll be right here, coach, if that's okay. Brother, life is much better with you here. I've heard you're an absolute legend. I've never thought in my life that a head coach of a team that... Arm wrestle. Give it to him, coach. All right. The outcome of this has nothing to do with tomorrow. Coach, I've really been working, but I've heard you've worked out for 4,000 days straight or something like that. Yeah, it's very hot. I thought it was going to be chilly out here, but it is maybe the most beautiful day we've ever experienced in front of this incredible student section. Thank you for the hospitality to your city. Okay, let's dive in here, Coach. You've been here for like 20 years. The expectations are championship or bust. And I've told this to Steve. I said this to Alex. We had no idea what we were showing up here. This crowd 
is so ready for tomorrow and this weekend. Cam Rising said, we don't lose at home. That's just how this whole thing goes. How did you instill that culture, and why do you think that's just the expectation of not only your team, but everybody that's a Utah youth? Well, first of all, we've had great support from this community. Uh, I'm sure most of these guys here are in the must. Mighty Utah student section, which I think is the best student section in the country. Uh, and then we just, you know, we got to protect this house mentality, and, and we take that very seriously. Yeah, and the culture of your team is one, like, uh, as soon as I get dropped into game day last year, incredibly honored. Anytime you heard Herbie or any of these big-time college football speak about your program, they're like, they take the identity of the coach. They're smothering on defense. They're going to ground and pound. They're going to be a disciplined team. And then all of a sudden we see... We see you show up on a damn Harley Davidson for this entire thing. When you hear that the team is taking your identity, do you agree with that sentiment? And what does that mean to you about your culture? You know, I think there's some truth to that. And I also think that, uh, you know, obviously the assistant coaches play a huge role in that. Uh, you know, the, the position guys taking on the identity of their position coach. Uh, it all starts in the weight room. we got a fantastic strength staff that starts instilling that mental and physical toughness uh, identity that we have in the weight room. And so uh, I think it's a collaborative effort with the whole program. Before the boys have their questions for you, is this sports through here? I don't think I know the exact model. I have a street glide myself. I like to ride. Yeah. It's kind of my meditation. How long have you been riding? That, that's not actually mine. I borrowed that. Mine's in storage. Just put it in. I got an ultra limited CVO. Ooh. And uh, it's, a, it's a great bike, but that, that's a. Uh, Ripping bike as well. How I assume the rides around here are glorious. Is that Incredible. like your yeah. getaway time, yeah, or what do you do got, while you're riding? Uh, we've got uh, you know Zion's Park down to the south, uh, Jackson Hole right up north. We can go to Yellowstone, ride your bike through Yellowstone. So a lot of good rides around here. Hey, this place is absurd, Coach. It is. That's why I've been here 20 years. Hell yeah. 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 AJ has a question for you, Coach. Coach, I know I don't want you to have to try to brag on yourself. We can brag for you, but you know how they, they say teams kind of take on the identity of their head coach, or, and they kind of we, – we think of, like, Mike Vrabel, Tennessee Titans, how they're ground and pound, let's go be tough guys. Your teams always are respected as super physical teams that go out there and try to take games away from people. Is that something – do you have to talk about that, or is that built – that just – kind of built in that you've already had that going. That's pretty ingrained in the program. That's in our culture. Uh, Steve can attest to that. He's, he was here as a you know, terrific player, obviously, here, and, and really embodies that what we're all Steve. about. Yeah, yeah, I give Steve, Steve a hand. Yeah. Ice up, Steve. Ice up. On the board. But, yeah, we have, uh, you know, that's been our identity for a lot of years. And, and when we have players come into our program, each recruiting class, it's you will become us. We won't become you. You're going to become us. Coach, there's a lot of hype that has been made uh, about the Pac-12 and about teams in the Pac-12. You guys are obviously back-to-back champions in the yeah. Rose Bowl doing incredible things. Not a lot of conversation about Utah football beginning of the season, going into the season. How do you deal with that? Do you care about that type of thing? And why are you not talked about more? I mean, I just, you know what I mean? I, I, you're jocked, obviously. You got a sleeveless on, incredible sunglasses. You're maybe the most relatable human I've run into in the coaching world. Why do you think that has kind of been the case? You know, I don't have a great answer for that, but I know we play on it pretty hard. We, we, uh, we love that. Uh, chip on our shoulder mentality and, and maybe not getting the uh, recognition that uh, our guys deserve. And so uh, we're used to it. And uh, like I said, we use it as motivation. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, I've heard that you're somewhat of a classic rock connoisseur. Not somewhat. Okay, so yeah, you, are absolutely. A, you are a big time. There is classic. no music after 1985 that I can tell you anything about. It's okay. all pre-'85. Love yeah. that. So with that in mind, <laughs> what song or band do you think best emulates this year's team? Oh, man, that's a great question. Uh, I don't know who emulates the team, but I can tell you I love the Stones and Zeppelin and, Hell yeah. and uh, Leonard Skinner and yeah, Grand right. Funk and the, the whole, you know, it goes on and on. But, but uh, this team has, uh, you know, got a great deal of toughness. Uh, we've had to use that me- next man up mentality, uh, you know, ever since game one. And to their credit, they've played that, uh, you know, to a T. And, and the guys that have had their opportunities to step up and fill in for guys that were missing have done a great job. Uh, let's talk about next man up. Pig farmer at quarterback. <laughs> yeah. There was a uh, blowing pig here, and uh, the fans 
love this guy. How did you not? 5-0 as a starter for you. I think uh, first game thrown for multiple touchdowns was last week. He's only getting better seemingly, and mm -hmm. nobody's really talking about it because a lot of the Cam Rising conversation has taken place all year. And We had Cam on. He is awesome. Yeah, Tell me is. about this pig farmer, though, and the mentality that it takes to step into the position that he has, especially for a quarterback that's as beloved as Cam Rising is. Right. Well, I'll tell you, Bryson Barnes is, is getting better every week. Uh, you know, tough guy. He was a two-time state wrestling champ in high school. You love that. I love that. How, how many quarterbacks were two-time state champs in wrestling? I mean, that, that's incredible. Uh, he was also state champ in football twice, state champ in baseball. Why? Uh, he, Why? he did it all. He did it all down on the pig farm down there in Milford, Utah. And, and uh, you saw that run uh, in the last Late. drive against SC when he you know, dipped his shoulder on that safety. And that, that epitomizes who he is. I listened to you talk to Reese Davis about that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, pig farmer. I heard uh, you talk to Reese Davis about that, and he said in the moment all you were thinking was, thank God we just got in a field goal range. What a kick to win that thing. Yeah. What a kick. Well, that's a monster game, a monster win for you guys. And now in the college football world, unlike the NFL where it's just record-based, like to get to where you ultimately want to go, there's a lot of opinion-based decisions being made by a board, by a group behind the scenes. A win against USC the way it happened, obviously huge. Tomorrow against Oregon, what do you think your team proves to the people that ultimately in the end do the college football playoff thing? But what do you want these people to describe your team as whenever they watch? Well, first of all, Oregon's a heck of a football team. They got, uh, you know, they're balanced. There is no weakness. They're, com they're complete. Uh, so we got our hands, uh, our, our um, work cut out for us. But, uh, you know, typically for us, if we win the line of scrimmage, that, that's a good sign for us. And that, that'll be the key to tomorrow's game is winning the line of scrimmage and uh, taking care of the football. 80 straight sellouts here. Yeah. I think you've won 29 out of 30 here, 18 of the last 19. Don't want to just go through everything, but home field advantage is real. Why is that? Well, I think it starts with the must, the mighty Utah student section. <laughs> they are uh, really, the atmosphere in Rice Eccles starts right there. Uh, we got uh, standing room only every week, like I said. Uh, the community is behind us, and uh, it's not the biggest stadium in the country, but it is one of the loudest, and it provides a huge, huge uh, advantage for the youths. The altitude. You guys training at it, other people not at it. I think that's a benefit as I well. I think it is as well, yeah. And we got uh, teams that come out up here, and in the second half, it starts to jump on their back a little bit. Yeah, I walked from the uh, shitter to here. Yeah. And I was with <laughs> <laughs> Connor has a question for you, Coach. Can you yeah. say that on this show? Yeah, oh, yeah. You can, yeah, okay. Yeah, let it eat. Do it eat. <laughs> what they've been saying. Yeah. You should hear what they've been saying. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's been long, Coach. Yeah. I've, been in me I've been in meetings all morning, so I don't know what's been going on. Hey, here. we appreciate that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Always getting better. Connor has uh, a question. Yeah, Coach, I mean, watching you right in here, I, I, I know I'd take a fucking bullet for you. Just right <laughs> I'm sure your team is the same way. Uh, Pre-game, you're talking to your guys. When you're giving kind of a speech, are you making it personal? Do you hear kind of the outside noise? that teams do to kind of use as bulletin board material? And are you going all the way back to like 1776, founding fathers, <laughs> why America's America? And what are you saying to your team? You know, uh, we try to block all the outside noise out. Um, you know, it's really about us and playing hard, playing smart, uh, passion and energy, playing the full 60. You know, just the things that it takes to win football games week in and week out. It doesn't vary much. You know, there's, a, there's certain things you've got to have uh, in your football team instilled. And uh, if you can uh, get that each week, then you've got a great chance to win. What song are you listening to right before the game starts or you're giving your speech? Angry, Rolling Stones, brand new. Oh, yeah? Yeah, great, a routine? great album. We have a playlist? We have a full, we have a routine before every game? No, 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 no routine, but uh, that's what I was listening to on the way over here. You house coffee? What do you, uh, what's your every, you seem to have so much juice, like so much energy. <laughs> you big coffee drinker? What are we doing? No caffeine, just natural, natural juice. Wow. Okay, so what was this 4,000 days of working out thing that Pete Thamel sent me right Yeah, I, I, I try to downplay that, but uh, it was uh, July of 2000, or excuse me, end of June 2008. I had missed a couple workouts. I felt crappy, like, what, what am I doing? Why, you know, get off your butt, you know, get, get going. And so on July 1st, 2008, I said, I'm going to see how long I can go working out without missing. And since that, till now, it's intact. It's, Every uh, single day? No Sunday, Monday through Saturday, well, six hey, days a week. Hey, the Lord yeah, said that's Sunday. That's you know, right. It's good enough for you. Yeah. It's good enough for the Lord. Hey, you look good. It's paying off. You Thank diet? You. You're a super dieting guy. We eat a lot no, of. No, I don't. I don't. I just don't try to eat not too much. That's that's all. I love it. Coach uh, Steve Smith has a question for you. Obviously. All right, Stephen. I, I know Coach. I don't, I don't. Steve Senior. What do you got? Hey, his name is Steve Senior. By I the know way, it is. we asked him why he wasn't the first. 
You know what I mean, Coach? <laughs> like Steve Smith the first, Steve Smith the second, yeah. mm -hmm. Steve Smith the third. You got what nothing gives? for Coach. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I do now. Yeah. Okay, I like that. So, Coach, you, you know Pac-12, playing USC, playing Oregon, all of this stuff. What do you see for the University of Utah today moving forward as you transition to try to take down Pac-12 and then moving on to the Big 12? Yeah, well, right now we're in the gauntlet of our schedule. You know, started with SC and then we got uh, obviously Oregon tomorrow and it just, you know, it stays tough week in and week out. So, so you got to be ready every single week to bring your A game. And that's the, that's the first uh, priority right now and the task at hand. Uh, we're excited about uh, being able to land in the, in the Big 12 and, and uh, start a new chapter, I guess you could say, in Utah football. But uh, right now it's all about Oregon and this game tomorrow and, and trying to uh, keep on you know, winning those championships. It's all about Oregon. It's all about Oregon. Uh, yep. That's right. Tell me about BYU. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us about tell us about BYU, folks. <laughs> Let, let's stick let's stick to the youth. Let's just stick to the youth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the one earlier. Yeah, that was the one earlier. Uh, coach, I want to let you know this state is beautiful. It's shown up for us in a massive way. Your fans have been so in yeah. incredible. Tomorrow morning is going to be awesome with game day, and we can't wait to watch your team the rest of the way. Coach. Well, I appreciate you. Appreciate you are the man. Me. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, that. how many years? 18? 19? 19. 19 years. Hey, that's not normal, right? That's, that's, very, that's very abnormal. That's an anomaly this day and age, and I feel very blessed and fortunate to be here. And do you think it's because of your relationship with the university, because of the success? Why do you think you've been able to maintain so much consistency? As Recruiting. The... Good players. We've had a ton of good players come through this program, like Steve you right here. A coach, too. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and also... He's a hell of a coach, though. Well, appreciate that. Steve. It's, it's true. <laughs> hey, Steve. I try to get him into coaching. He's just not quite ready yet. Yeah, all he does is watch film right now. That's literally all. He's waiting to get well, back in. He offered me the job, the opportunity to interview last year at wide receivers coach, and uh, I like I like Charlotte right now. Yeah, you like Utah though. <laughs> yeah. You donated money here, uh, obviously. Look, it's not about the money. It's the it's the full on. I know what Coach Whittingham is expecting, and I need that. And he wants that commitment. And right now, I don't have the bandwidth to fully give him that commitment that he's desiring. Okay, so let's talk about coaching. Are you doing this till the day you die? No, not doing it till the day I die. No, I'm a year-to-year -year guy right now. Uh, as long as I, as soon as I run out of passion and energy, it'll be time to step down. I've got more passion and energy right now than I've had in 19 years. So I'm, I'm Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Utah Utes football team, Coach Kyle Winnen. He has beat him. Uh, he has beat him a couple times as yep. coach. I don't think he's saying that. That is the mighty Utah student section speaking for Coach Wade, who's been here for 19 years. Man, he sleeveless. Jack, oh, yeah. Jock. Big old calves. Calves. This big calves. So awesome. Hey, his calves. Yep. Massive Genetics. calves. Yeah. Pulled up on a damn Harley, this yeah. guy. Your glasses Yeah, on. these. Come on. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. That's the real deal. I guess this is something people talk about. Coach Witt's calves. They're the real deal. You look at asses, you look at calves. Is that guy an athlete or not? Yep. What's your problem, Steve? What's up, Steve? What's wrong, Steve? Steve? What's, wrong, Steve? Steve? What's your problem? Nothing. That's how you can tell. They also tell me that if there was a uh, like <laughs> fight to death <laughs> amongst college football coaches, Ooh. Uh, odds on favorite would be <laughs> yeah, he's up Coach right. Kyle Whitting. I've been hearing that for years. No joke. I've heard that for years. It makes sense whenever you see him. He shows up yeah. properly jacked. 4,000 days he worked out straight, and it's still going. There would be some days where you feel like shit. There'd be some days where you're tired. You just don't have it. Unless you got grit, like Big Coach Win. Yeah. Hell yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's awesome. They're going to win by 100. Yeah, that's tough to beat. Holy shit. That's dope right there. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. I'd say. Yeah. All right. Jeez. Listen, I don't know how we go on after that. Dude just Stop. rode off on a Harley, okay? I mean, that, 
Look at these humans. Hey, thank you. In the back there, these two guys, Pat McAfee can't kick. And I've missed less than Pat, met less kicks than Pat McAfee. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They know what they're trying to do. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, listen, you're, you're not the only money. ones that are trying to get in on a field goal kicking contest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you don't okay. always. We'll see. Hey, we'll put you two in there, though, for tomorrow. They'll put you in the uh, running for that field goal kicking contest. We'll see how many kicks you miss, pal. Hey, okay? You might be sad soaking tomorrow night, Bob. <laughs> All right? No earthquake underneath your bed. None. <laughs> Just laying there. Anyways, yeah, I was not, I didn't really, I wasn't always pointing through the uprights. Well, it was going a long way. Hard though. Tough job. It was going a long way. Didn't always know where, Steve, you know, which is why I went to punt in the NFL instead of kick field goals. Still all-time leading scorer. Speaking of kicking, though, Justin Tucker, freak athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Freak. Um, good kicker. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. He's a good kicker. That guy's an opera singer. Yes. What? You don't need to be an athlete to be an opera singer. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, it helps though. It'll help a little bit. The way, the way you say the things. The peanut gallery over here is <laughs> 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 peanut gallery. Whoa! Whoa! It's, Whoa. Bugle. it's, it's bugle bugle boys. Boy. Yeah, it's bugle boys, okay? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, we've been called a lot of things. Yeah, we have been called. Uh, why do you hate kickers? I never said I <laughs> Sounds like it's it how you say what you say, I think is what everybody says. You know, which Jerry Judy said. Uh -huh. And then yep. you went on and said. Anyways, uh, before Dalton Kincaid joins us to wrap this thing up. Real athlete. Okay. He is in I athlete. will say he jumped right up into the stand. Yeah. That, that was, was phenomenal. Easy. He's him. also like six foot uh forever. Five, yeah, six, five, very, six, very tall. Four, five, He's gonna be six. a guy. Dawson Knox and him across the middle, Stephon Diggs, mm. Gabe Davis able to do uh, it. James Woo. Cook. Latavius, Latavius Murray. Murray. Yeah, well. Yeah. Obviously back there. Okay. Doing what? Ten years in the NFL. You hate on a vet that's getting paid to play a position that's no longer valued? You're a bad guy. Love him. Think he should get all the goal line touches. You don't have to give James Cook any touchdowns, but he should be one, two, three. Every single down, put him in there. James Cook is electrifying. What'd you say, Tom? I mean, I guess if it was Peyton Hillis, Connor wouldn't have a problem with it. But that has he did say that earlier, didn't he? What are you talking about? Yeah, he said that earlier. Let's make our picks here before Dalton Kincaid. This is the only segment really that we've been able to maintain throughout a couple NFL seasons. We're going to pick the entire slate against the spread. Steve Smith Senior is going to join us. I will tell you, Steve. Last week we were in Ohio, and when we were in Ohio, I don't believe you're on camera. When we were in Ohio. AQ Shipley did this segment with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He went two and nine. So confident. I mean, like the worst. The yeah. worst that has ever happened publicly yep. into a microphone. Real bad. AQ Shipley did that. And he was so matter of fact with everyone. We have faith that you're going perfect today on the NFL slate. Yep. And then tomorrow on college game yep. day, you're going perfect with the college football slate. Hell Let's yeah. dive into this thing. Let's jump in. Uh, obviously, Eagles. Commanders in Washington, one touchdown spread. Will the Commanders keep it within seven in the NFC East rivalry that is birds in Washington? Steve Smith, you go first, pal. I got the Eagles. Okay, Eagles minus seven. AJ, your thoughts? Um, Steve swayed me a little bit, so give me the Eagles <laughs> minus seven here. Just his matter-of-factness with it? Not yeah, even he seemed a to not guess. even skip a beat. He seemed to be very, very confident. Jalen Hurts just wanted to time 100 thing. He yeah. was there. There's a couple memes of him having a conversation with somebody and not knowing if the other side of the conversation was enjoying the conversation mm -hmm. that was happening with Jalen. He was fresh to death in that suit. Oh, yeah. Feels like he's coming out of that award show looking great, feeling great. Give me the Eagles as well. Jag Steelers. Now, Trevor Lawrence mm. said in a description of the terrible towel, he actually complimented a little bit. He said he appreciated the Pittsburgh Steelers' culture. He said they're little gold towels when he was asked to describe what the terrible towel is. Bill Cowher so saw that. Funny, a lot dude. of Pittsburgh people saw that. And were like, this long-haired son of a bitch wants to disrespect the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think he was doing that. Now, George Pickens calls the defense in Jacksonville a hope defense in the secondary because they're just hoping that they can cover somebody if they don't get to the quarterback fast enough with the D-line. Steve Smith, who do you like? How do you like it? The Jags are favored by two and a half in Pittsburgh. I have to go with the Jags. I just believe their defense will step up. I believe Pittsburgh is, is struggling. But they don't really have a true identity uh, on offense. Okay, AJ, do you agree with Steve Smith? Steve did not sway me on this one. Give me Pittsburgh plus two and a half. Maybe TJ Watt gets a pick six. Or maybe at least a pick, probably pick six. We'll see. Uh, but I like what they can do. I like Kenny Pickett. I think he's going to start playing from quarter one like he's been playing in the second half. This one's for uh, Coach Wait. Oh, mama, I'm in fear for my life from the long arm of the law. You know this song. I do not. Steve, you're biased. Steve. 
Steve, it's a banger. He also yeah. chuckled at the little yellow towel comment. Yeah, I know. He's a raven, obviously, uh, in his soul there, so he doesn't love Pittsburgh. But I do believe with Bill Cowher's speech and what the Steelers have been able to do, I think they get the win. Hmm. So I definitely will take <laughs> plus two and a half. Uh, Saints at Colts. I got the Indianapolis Colts because these sons of bitches are playing great football. Got screwed out of a dub against the Cleveland Browns last week. We all know it. The NFL admitted it. Jim Irsay told us the NFL admitted it. And now people want to suspend Jim Irsay. If you suspend Jim Irsay, he's going to fly his helicopter over top of that stadium and watch from above. Yep. He does not care to play by no. your rules. And the team has that identity. Give me the Colts at home. You've been in that building, Steve. You were with the mascot blue. That place is electrifying. You like the Colts over the Saints, too. I know it. I do. Yes! Yeah. I do. Wow. Yes! Yeah. I love that. AJ? I, I don't trust Tim. I don't trust Dennis Allen as the coach of Man, I did. Oh. You're going to say Tim Allen, which I like, too. He's <laughs> <laughs> getting holidays. You know? Yeah, right. Man. Santa Claus, baby. You guys got me messed up here because I wanted the Colts until I heard both of you guys Whoa. on the same page. It makes me worry. No, you're doing it right the then. Now nah, give me the Colts plus one. Okay, clean please, sweep please. for the Colts. That's the first time this season. I'm sure that's good news. Damn it. Texans at <laughs> Panthers. Uh, Steve, we'll start with you. You said they everything's hunky-dory down there in Carolina. They're getting three and a half at home against C.J. Stroud. Your thoughts? What you got, AJ? Oh, what you got, Steve? Steve. Yeah, Steve. 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 I know who I got. Steve. You know what? Steve. Give, me, give me the Steve. Steve. Give me the text, Steve. 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 Who you got, Pat? Give me the Texans. Oh. Cool. You got the Carolina Panthers. Yep. All right. Hey, that's good work. All right. We'll get you out of that one. Uh, Rams, Cowboys, <laughs> either six and a half or six, depending on the book that you go to. Cowboys at home. Anything we need to know about this game, Tone Diggs? The money is on the Cowboys, my friend. Okay. Steve, money is on the Cowboys in public. Six-point favorites at home against the Rams. Who do you like? Cooper Cup is Ooh. back. I'm, I'm surprised at the Rams. They they should be winning some games. They should have beat Pittsburgh. I, I think that this is a game they can beat. They, they can finish out a full, complete game. Okay, you're getting six and a half to the Los Angeles Rams. AJ, you agree with Steve or no? I absolutely agree with Steve on this one. Give me Rams plus six and a half. If you look at the stats of that Cowboys defense since Diggs' departure. Oh, yeah. Nowhere near the same. I also like the Los Angeles Rams plus six and a half, and that is not good news for any of us. Mm. Falcons taking on the Tennessee Titans, dressed as the Houston Oilers. <laughs> we talked to Artie Smith. He's obviously had a little banter with Vrabel. They know each other well. Favored on the road in Tennessee are the Falcons, who are leading the NFC South. Your thoughts, Steve Smith Sr.? I've been critical of, of Desmond Ritter. I, I also believe that the, the Atlanta Falcons are a better team overall. Uh, Tennessee Titans, their, their defense is, is their secondary suspect, so I'll go with the, with the Falcons. Okay, right. you like the Falcons. Tannehill is officially out. Oh, uh, I believe that has been ruled today. <laughs> yeah. I believe Vrabel yeah. said. Will Levis yep. this play? It's either Malik or Will Levis. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. We're going to see double down, down right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, we're yeah. going to see both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Steve Smith definitely on the, <laughs> uh, on the Falcons, AJ. he's saying. Uh, AJ, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm on the Falcons. I just, we just don't know. What's going to happen to the quarterback position for the Titans? Falcons minus two and a half. Me as well. Let's go to the MetLife Bowl. Jets and Giants. Aaron and Eli are going to be playing catch before the game. Jets favored <laughs> by two and a half at home against a home team, Giants. Steve Smith, your thoughts? It's a blind pick. I, I go with the Jets. I like their defense. <laughs> okay, blind pick. I like it. AJ? Well, my blind pick, I'm going to take the Giants here. Whoa. Plus three. I think they find a way their defense stands up and the offense does enough. Giants had a lot of discussions this week about not trading Saquon Barkley, even though he has less than a year left on his contract and could go to a contender. Give me the Jets as well. Uh, Patriots, Dolphins. Dolphins favored by nine and a half. In Miami against the Patriots. Connor, you're obviously a diehard Patriot fan. Your thoughts on the oh. Finns? Uh, best game yep. they had last, last week. Connects. They got a uh, – yeah. Jack Jones <laughs> came back. Jonathan Jones came back in the secondary. But we're talking about the Dolphins here. I mean, give me a break. So you like the Dolphins in this? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, Steve, nine and a half is the spread in Miami. The Dolphins have been an issue for the Patriots in Miami for a long time, not just this year. Tua undefeated against Bill Belichick. Okay. Whoa. Hmm. Nine and a half, too many points. I, Steve, your thoughts? I, I don't gamble. I don't know. I'm just picking a team, the Dolphins. Well, that's not the segment. <laughs> that's not the game, Steve. That's Sorry. not the segment. They got to win by those points. Hey, I don't, I, bro, I'm just picking a team that I think is going to win. Okay, who's going to win? 
I said the Dolphins. Okay, are they going to win by nine and a half? I don't know. Steve, <laughs> yes or no? Okay, you got the Dolphins. AJ, your thoughts? I'm going to take the Dolphins. Uh, I'll get to give me the minus nine and a half. It's the fucking segment. Jeez Steve. Louise. It's the whole thing. Uh, I mean, it's just the whole the thing. Is, like, the way you're it's talking all we to got, me. It makes me Sorry, it's the way I'm saying it. Sorry. <laughs> it's the way, the way I'm saying I don't mean it like that. Anyways, Vikings, Packers, Vikings, one and a half point favorites, coming off Kirk Cousins' best game in a long time. Packers coming out of a bye? No, yeah. Thursday night, no, bye. Yeah, um, I mean, it's just impossible to pick the Packers right now. You know, Aaron Jones is healthy, and then he goes out there and they give him the ball five times, and then they get their asses beat. So until um, the Packers prove that they can beat anybody, I, I don't know how you can pick them. Steve? Broncos. I'm going Vikings. All right, you like the Vikings. One and a half. That's basically what you've been doing this entire time. AJ, <laughs> uh, Vikings, Packers. Honestly, I, give me the Packers plus one and a half at oh, home. They've got to find a way to put some together. There's some Packers fans out here, obviously. We appreciate that. Give me the Vikings. Cleveland Browns, Seattle Seahawks. Three and a half point favorites at home are the Seahawks wearing incredible uniforms. Yep. Steve, yeah. your thoughts? I like P.J. Walker playing quarterback. That means that uh, Kevin Scafancy is actually going to run the football a little bit more. When uh, Deshaun Watson's in a the game, they you know, gave him a lot of money. They seem to rely on the pass, and that's not the way to go. So I got the Cleveland Browns. Okay, A.J., your thoughts in Man. Seattle. I think this Cleveland defense travels the travels well. They go into Seattle. They get wow. a win. Jerome Ford, I believe, is out. Indianapolis coach should have beat the Browns. I watch Miles Garrett in person, though. I'm never going to bet against him ever in my life. They're getting three and a half. I like it. Bengals, Niners. Niners favored by four. Brock Purdy probably not playing. We're not 100% sure, but Sam Darnold looks like he's the guy. In San Fran, Steve, your thoughts? I'm a 49ers fan, actually, and so I'm, I'm a little suspect. Uh, <laughs> but I think the Bengals need this win, but I'm going to go with the 49ers. I okay. think Kyle, Kyle Shanahan. AJ. I'm going Bengals here plus four and a half. I think the, with Brock Purdy most likely out, I think Sam Darnold's going to play well, but I just think not, uh, not good enough. Okay, give me the Niners at home. Ravens, Cardinals, nine and a half points spread. Baltimore goes to the desert, favored by damn near 10. Steve, who do you like? Come on now. Baltimore Ravens is who he's <laughs> taking. His Cardinals team scrappy. Yeah. AJ, your thoughts? This Cardinals team is scrappy. I think uh, Gardeck still he has four sacks coming off the edge there. But uh, give me the Ravens. Lamar is just playing at an MVP level right now. And I will take the Baltimore Ravens as well. Kansas City Chiefs, Denver Broncos. The line is seven to seven and a half. They're in Denver. Patrick Mahomes has played very well there. Are they going to win by more than a touchdown, Steve Smith? I'm going with Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, 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 smart. Russell Wilson sucks coming from the, the crowd here. Wow. Obviously, oh, he's not boy. loved like Canada. AJ, your thoughts? Yeah, Kansas City plus seven or minus seven all day. Yep, me too. It's going to be impossible to pick the Broncos ever. Sunday night football, <laughs> Bears, Chargers, nine to eight and a half. I will take the son of the arm wrestler, yep. yeah. Chicago Bears plus nine. Steve Smith. I just don't trust the head coach for the Los Angeles Chargers, oh. man. He does some stuff Ooh. calculated that just makes me have, scratch my head. So I'm uh -huh. going to the bench. Your thoughts, AJ? Chargers, Whoa. minus eight and a half. They get it done at home. Okay, so that's the entire NFL slate. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to wrap up this glorious day in Utah, which we are so incredibly thankful to all of you. Joining us now, a man who had his, how you doing? I'm in the NFL now moment last night. Utah Ute legend, Buffalo Beal tight end. Ladies and gentlemen, Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. <laughs> Dalton, hell of a night last night, cuz. Congratulations on your big come. I appreciate it. We love Dalton. We love Dalton. The place is electric. Place is electric. Bro, it's awesome. And the reason why they love you is because they saw you do what you did last night for the first time, pretty much on a big scale in the NFL. How does it feel this morning knowing that your game can do what you did in Utah in the NFL after last night's performance? Uh, it felt good. Uh, more than anything, felt good getting a win. Um, and just excited really going into tomorrow with Utah having a big game, college game day. Uh, just excited for the Utes. Okay, so let's talk about the Utes. Uh, this Utes team is going to have a tough Oregon squad. I mean, you know, these Pac-12 robberies and games. How do you think? Oh, no. How, he's back. He's back. He's back. How do you think this one plays out tomorrow, Dalton? 
I'm always riding with the Utes. Uh, at home, rice cycles, there's there's nothing like it. The only thing that would make it a little better is if it was a night game. Uh, but the must is going to be rocking. Uh, our defense is best in the nation, so it's going to be fun to watch. What should we expect tomorrow as we get to experience a game day here in Utah? We've greatly undervalued the football community out here. What should tomorrow be like from beginning to end, Dalton? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long day. Uh, it's gonna be an early morning, a late night. Um, I think people definitely sleep on Salt Lake City. It's it's nothing like like Utah. Um, Salt Lake is it's different little town. So it's it's gonna be awesome. All right, well, Dalton, we appreciate the hell out of you making some time in the middle of your day here. Any final messages to the Mus? Uh, Jack Bomeister, he is for the brand. Sam Martin is for the brand. And the youth are pulling this thing out tomorrow. All right, we appreciate the hell out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dalton Kincaid. Thank you, Dalton. I think a good omen going into the game yep. would be A.J. Hawk hitting one of these shots oh, for somebody to win a thousand bucks. Come on. Steve, will you pick out one of these signs for A.J. to shoot for? For a thousand bucks. A uh, certified soaker. A certified soaker one has made its way around the internet. Yep. Right over here with AJ holding a chihuahua. If AJ Hawk can make this shot over the thank you Magawa squirrel, it'll look like a rat mouse. The certified soaker sign owner will win $1,000 on this feel good Friday. Oh. Close. Tone Diggs, will you please pick out a sign? Give me the Boston Connor invented soaking. Okay, Boston Connor invented soaking I right wish. here. Equals LDS Fridays. AJ Hawk, if you can make this shot, the soaking sign will get $1,000 in a brand new tip for the earthquaker underneath <laughs> who's running his legs and a right to a... Uh, right there. Ty Schmidt. Give me the Uncle Wexy sign, AJ, with the monocle. <laughs> Uncle Wexy sign. Now, don't look too far into that. That's what AJ's thinking. I mean, that's what AJ's thinking, but obviously, AJ with a top hat and a mustache and a monocle is something that deserves a chance to win $1,000. Here on the President's Circle in beautiful Utah, October 27th. AJ, win that man a thousand bucks. Oh, no. Oh, no. He almost died. The man almost split. Boston Connor, which sign? I'm going to go with uh, Oregon fans white back to front over there on uh, the right side. Okay, obviously I have a baby. You should not be doing that. Uh, Oregon fans white back to front. If you can make this shot, AJ, that lovely lady over there will win $1,000 on this Feel Good Friday! Oh. Oh, AJ still hates women. All right, for me, for me, maybe, I mean, uh, maybe. For me, it'll be the two guys with the Pat McAfee can't kick, and I've missed less kicks than Pat McAfee, because I'm not 100% sure if they have any chance of getting picked for the kick tomorrow, but right now, they have an opportunity to win $1,000 if AJ Hawk can bury on, this AJ. shot for the two hating ass hoes in the back. Oh. Good board, good board yeah, underneath. He, he got up for it. Bonus ball back here, Steve, bonus ball. One more sign, please. One more sign. Oh. BYU sucks. BYU sucks. It's as easy as that. Which one is it? Behind certified soaker. Behind the certified soaker, BYU sucks in the back. Cuz, good luck. He wrote it. It's easy. Oh, no. Oh. Hey, Pat, there's another ball Good behind you. Let Steve shoot. Steve. Steve, yes. drain it. Steve. Perfect. Steve, 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 Steve. Now, Steve, Steve. this is the first time all season that we've had the incredible opportunity for a show to be filmed immediately after us. We were supposed to be off the air five minutes ago. Oh, okay. With that being said, if Steve buries this shot, AJ, we will give $5,000 to who? This guy who says I'm his biological father. Okay. I'm happy to hear that. Good jawline on the guy. Might be an offspring from A.J. Hawk. Steve Smith Sr. 
Make Steve Smith Jr. pumped. Bury a shot for 5K! Oh. Hit the wire of the sky cam. Oh, yeah, it does count. Hit the wire. One more shot. One more shot. One more shot. One more shot. Same person! All right, that's it. We're off yep. the air. Okay, it's been fun. We appreciate you all so much. We're going to go mingle with these fine people who showed up for us. College game day tomorrow morning should be absolutely bananas. You all are the greatest people on earth. Have the best weekend of your life. We'll see you for Overreaction Monday. Big thanks to Steve. Big thanks to Coach. Big thanks to Alex Smith. Big thanks to Cam Rising. Big thanks to Dalton Kincaid. Yep, yep. Big thanks to all of these people. The greatest weekend of your life. We'll see you on Monday. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Goodbye.